Last night was State of the Union. I bet most of you watched it. Everyone right now is saying that Katie Britt bombed and it was kind of a really bad GOP rebuttal. I think the most uh, important takeaway from the night is that there was a Gold Star father who was arrested for yelling United States Marine Corps and Abby Gate at Joe Biden. And the, the, the crazy thing about that is they, they, they pulled him out of the room, charged him with a misdemeanor, and that was the least disruptive yelling of the night. There were Republicans that were yelling at Joe Biden, calling him a liar and insulting him. And this guy just yells United States Marine Corps. So I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm surprised or shocked. I'm just disgusted. But of course, following the State of the Union, you know, one thing everyone's always uh, thinking about is what's really going on behind the scenes. Because you see a couple things. We watched Bernie Sanders have no mask on as C-SPAN was running there. You know, C-SPAN's live before the president arrives. Bernie's not wearing a mask. Then the president arrives. He sits down, puts a mask on. Then when the president's done speaking, Bernie gets up, takes his mask off and starts to leave. And the question is, why did he put a mask on? What is really going on behind the scenes when you see these politicians laughing and smiling with each other? And it looks so performative. So we're going to hang out with a, a handful of former staffers who are going to explain to us the secrets of the uh, the backroom deals. Uh, what, what else is there? Sex orgies? Co uh, cocaine orgies. Co cocaine orgies. Right, that proves it. He, he, admit, like, he admitted yeah, it. It's it sounds like here. we're calling Madison and trying to it's get him here. from this uh, <laughs> I the will, pod. I'll call Madison put him on speakerphone <laughs> if we want to at some point. During this. All right, let's do it. We'll, you. well uh, I'm, I'm actually half kidding because I imagine a lot of it's very mundane. You know, we've, we've, we've done shows from, uh, uh, I think, two different offices now. And it's like people sitting at their computer doing work. You know, most people assume it's going to be like House of Cards or, or something like that. And it's probably more just like a less funny version of The Office. It's like you're it's in an like office. It's like Veep. It's like Veep? It really, it really is. is. It's like just like Veep. All right, well, then let's just get into it. Uh, who wants to, you guys just introduce yourselves. Have fun. Yeah. I'm Luke Ball. I started a company, Mason Burr Strategies, after I was detoxing from Capitol Hill. Worked on the Hill for four and a half years with Matt Gates, Madison Cawthorn, Pat Fallon. And worked with Ben along the way, too. So he's come along and started helping us out. Would, would Madison actually, if you called him right now, it's like 10 a.m., would he talk about the sex orgies and the cocaine? Probably. <laughs> okay, we'll you, do you it. You want to do it? But not right now. Not right now. Oh, no, I'll do it. Give us a jump, jump, jump right into it. waking up. Let him get the coffee okay. before you call him Madison. It's still, still wearing off from the night before, so <laughs> we got to give him a little bit of time. All right. Um, I'm Ben Stout, um, and I did just a little under a decade on uh, congressional staff. Um Started out in Georgia and worked for Congressman Jody Heiss. Uh, he was like one of the founders of the Freedom Caucus. Right on. Um, he was great. He married me and my wife. It was like a wow. real cool like mentorship uh, mentor for for me. Um, uh, and I actually, it was interesting because I started, I did district staff for him, which is just this total other world from DC staff. It's like, it's, it's not even like the same ballpark. Yeah. Um, so I did that, and then I went up to D.C. and did two and a half years as Lauren Boebert's deputy chief of staff, comms director. That makes for a long decade. Two and a half years became a decade yeah. real quick doing that. Um, learned a lot, but there was a lot of challenges there. Definitely learned crisis comms. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then got burned out. The burnout on the Hill is like a very real thing. Um, and so... I'm burned out, and I've never even worked there. You know? Right, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, um, so I took a year off. So I left, went back, spent time with my family, spent time with Abby, my wife, and um, and then uh, did like three months in Europe, just like phone off. Really detoxing. <laughs> yes. And then and then got back in January, and then me and Luke partnered up, and um, uh, we're kind of doing doing a comp shop. So that's right the, on. my background. We're taking a mutual fund portfolio approach to candidates right now instead of having our single stock on one person because <laughs> we've both been in a situation where you ride or die with one person and that's your entire, your, your, your title's gone, your financial security, everything is just completely out the window and we didn't want that. Yeah, we got Lisa hanging out. Hey guys, so I actually am, I, we all know I work for Tim. I book for this show specifically. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. But, um, but I also worked on the Hill from 2012 until 2022 with a two years off to do Middle East foreign policy. So I am also a former Hill staffer. After I left, I went to a, a place here and there and then I came right over to Tim. So Maybe we should, uh, I don't know if you want to text Madison and maybe like 11 We'll, we'll we'll give him time to. All right, I'll give him a heads up. Yeah, and also doesn't just. Grab my coffee. Yeah, otherwise we like start the show with like and the sex orgies, and it's kind of just you know. <laughs> from the I don't know, man. Uh, that's that's how I normally start. I'm, my I'm insulted that I was never invited to any of them. Like honestly, <laughs> if they're that ubiquitous, like we saw the video. <laughs> Oh, you didn't have to staff anybody for the sex parties. So okay, that's you're right. Thing. I didn't. I'm, I'm a little offended. Like I worked for wholesome members of Congress. Not, not that Madison isn't. He was just young, but like, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little offended. 
Well, yeah, it's a little bit. All right. Well, so I didn't want to go. I just I'm gonna text him right well, now. Let's so. let's start last night. So you talked about obviously what we're talking about right now is State of Union. Yeah. And last night you talked about like the masks. This was happening like literally. We were both on the hill in the dead center of 2020. Right. Whenever mm-hmm. it was COVID was at its peak and everybody's freaking out. And they were doing it then. The whole masks on the floor was a requirement. And Dems would walk off and take those puppies right off, right? All um, fake. Huh? It's all fake. It's all fake. It's all fake. So, um, and Washington is Hollywood for it. ugly people. That's all it is. Mm. It's all theatrics. Everything that you see in front of the scenes, we were just talking about this afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like the people put on some persona. Everyone's a Christian up there. Everyone is happy. And, you know, when you get behind the scenes and when you get in those offices, it is like they turn on a dime. Who do you, who do you think is the most evil member of Congress right now? I, Sheila I, I, Jackson Lee. Really? Well, that, you think so? I was going to say Adam Schiff. Schiff. Yeah. No. So, well, so Schiff, I think, here's the problem with that is because because she's not as intelligent as Schiff, you can only do so much damage, <laughs> right? So true. It's so true. Like, there are some really evil people that are just dumb, and so... Ineffective. Like, ineffective, and so you don't really notice it. But Schiff is smart, and so his evilness is felt. You it's, heard it's that. Effective, yeah. You like, heard that Sheila, audio you know, On a personal that, level, on a professional level, she is... A nightmare. Yeah. Not even that, though. She used to, like, threaten, like, she would scream at her employees when they were driving her in the car to where they had to pull over and, like, jump out of the Can car. Can we play that audio clip? <laughs> is there a way that, that we have that... But not even that. She liked to hear herself speak so much that one time she went down to the house floor to, to speak and they shut the lights out on her because she refused to leave until she got like airtime. She had airplanes turned around on the tarmac because she left her bag. Yeah, she, she was like, do you know who I am? Turn this airplane around. She Wait, is, is, is this it leaked audio? Yeah, Sheila the leaked Jackson audio from the staff. <laughs> yes, no, no, you got to play it because <laughs> it is, it is probably... Even so it would be happen. objectively hilarious had we not worked on the hill before and been like, this is exactly what goes on behind the scenes occasionally. The, the audio here is next level for the way that she just speaks to a staffer that has done like a minor thing it is so minor like they didn't give her her remarks in time or something she used to make her staffer stand at at behind her during meetings with a tray and have a glass of water on them like a butler (laughs) yeah yeah her stories are horrific yeah she is wild she is just super out of control i'm trying to find the like a video on it's on it's not on twitter i think the new york post was the one that originally dropped it but it would be on uh I think it was in probably on YouTube 2012 or 2016 something like that the hill 2012 I think the hill dropped a really the long caller did one has been- yeah so we've got it was a daily caller that's what it was we've got Fox 26 Houston I don't know if they're gonna play the audio they're gonna bleep it out and that's yeah. not the funny version <laughs> Sheila Jackson Lee. so how do you find it unbleeped let me it, I New heard it I heard it embedded in an article for like red state okay this is one's on YouTube that says can I just put it up to the to hear no, and play. No, I have to put it on okay, the computer. Yeah, Fox 26 Houston leaked audio. Sheila Jackson Lee cusses out staffer, and it, it might have been bleeped out, but this sounds yeah. like the correct one. But it's, but it's probably bleeped. Is there a way to get it not bleeped? Um, it I will just play. I will just play it. But yeah, if you guys want to, you, you got to put your headphones on if you want to hear it. Okay. A front runner in Houston's mayoral race has been recorded apparently seemingly cursing out a staff member in a leaked audio See, recording. Maybe it's good that it's bleeped out. Undated seemingly and There's another one that says leaked audio Jackson and it's just the raw audio. Email staff member. The profanity-laced audio was published by the New York Post and other online media. I don't want you to do a thing. I want you to have a I want you to take Reddit. I want you to say Congresswoman was such and such date. That's what I want. That's the kind of stamp that I want to have. Oh, that's that's, yeah, that's that's nothing. Not Come on. Not no, th- th- there's one that says leaked audio. Sheila Jackson Lee cusses out staffer, and it puts it in the full context. It's also from Fox 26 Houston. But again, like these are really mundane things, and it probably was not her worst tirade of the whole day. Yeah. There was probably other things that were going on in addition to was what she, she the just one said who here. did like the parking. No, to- that was uh, Eleanor Holmes from D.C. She died to park a car on the hill, and she did like it was like an eighteen point parking job it was yeah. like it's super funny she couldn't she couldn't do it to save her life it was hilarious. he's got to think these members haven't driven themselves the people who've been on the hill they haven't driven themselves in years some do thank thankfully some yeah, do i true. had a boss one time like years ago that didn't know right. how to use technology and would we would have to print him out map quest directions see that, that that houston <laughs> video was like three seconds of this is like a minute long right? no it is like a minute and 40 seconds i believe a piece of paper from that woman uh, regarding uh, something that was owed by Duncan Tell. Where is it? What, what date was it? All from yes. Sure, Rom took it upstairs. I have to call him. He took it up when I switched out the pictures. 
call him. I don't want you to do a goddamn thing. I want you to have a fucking brain. I want you to have read it. I want you to say Congresswoman was such and such day. That's what I want. That's the kind of staff that I want to have. So some stupid other motherfucker did it. <laughs> and I don't have the information. Nobody sent me the information. I need to uh, ensure my um, schedule. And, uh, you know, if, if Boo Boo did it, shit ass did it, fuck face did it. <laughs> nobody knows a goddamn thing in my office. Okay? Nothing. I gave it to you. Your job was to get it on the calendar, imprint it in your brain, or send me the information back saying, Congresswoman, I made sure that the Ovid Duncan Tell event that you gave me uh, for so and so date at seven is on the fucking calendar. Not to oh, Jerome Hansen. Okay? So when I called Jerome, he only me sit up there like a fat ass <laughs> idiot. Uh, what the fuck he doesn't know? Okay? Both of y'all are fuck up the fucking. <laughs> this is the worst shit that I could have ever had put together. <laughs> Goddamn big ass joke. <laughs> idiot. Why, why are we liking her more and more as this video goes on? <laughs> nobody, nobody's respecting them. Nobody gives a shit about what you're doing. And you ain't doing shit. Dude, that what I love about it, it is she's slowly cranking the volume up. <laughs> she's like, it starts with. I don't want you to do a goddamn thing, you see? And then it ends with two grown-ass mom children get down and yelling. She started as a congresswoman and ended as Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. It's like you, I, I could feel the exponential curve of anger, but it was kind of funny because I'm like, lady, like I'm listening to this. I get the point. You know what I mean? You could say it one time. Yeah. Not only that, you have to remember that the, the person that's driving her around is either like her staff assistant or her scheduler, right? And so they're usually very young, right? Like fresh out of college, if if they're not like interns or whatever, we've had interns drive people around. They're getting paid almost next to nothing. They're very young and then they're getting berated like and that. And they it, have no decision-making ability. Nothing. They have no... They're just like... They're just giving congressional tours, driving them around and, and ordering flags. But but the thing is, is that like they're they're young and she's just berating them. And I, you, it, you wouldn't be press hard pressed to walk through Congress and see people crying all the time. Uh, how many times I, I, I heard I saw girls crying in the bathroom because of members berating them crazy. Yeah, but, but how many of those members are Republicans? Uh, some are. Oh, yeah. Some. A lot of See, them. I'm telling you right now, the problem Republicans have is they do not have a Sheila Jackson lead. <laughs> That's true. I mean, look at how how hard she goes because some dude forgot a piece of paper. And it's really Jerome's fault. Damn! He forgot really the paper. Jerome's fault. It's, really, it's his own fault. He forgot. But you could hear it in the guy's voice. As soon as she asked a question and he knew that he did yeah. not have... We, we have been there where it's like, there's no good answer here. So you dance around it for two minutes or whatever it's on the way you we're know. trying to get it it's but i mean look that's that's the culture we, of capitol hill sometimes you need republicans to have that kind of zeal and anger this chip is, roy yeah oh yeah true. oh chip roy he's yelling at people he, well he won he, when he walks down the hall steam follows behind. <laughs> um, uh, right, well, the, the problem is like some of the worst the, the members who are worst to their staff are some of the best representatives in Washington mm -hmm. sometimes because it's if you're not really difficult to work for it means you're not really trying the people who have the easiest time on capitol hill are the ones that can go up and sit for the backbenchers because they get an email from leadership office and what the whip basically says you're going to vote this way and they show up and they vote that way they don't do anything opposition to the party because they're scared that their lobby is going to drop them they're not going to be able to fundraise and their committee assignments are dependent on yes. how much money yep. that they can actually get at the end of the day if half of the things that happen in washington dc happened in corporate america it'd be white collar crime but but instead, it's how we operate our government. And, so, and sorry, you can go ahead. But no, I, I, think, I think this is actually an important point that we don't want to take too much time on this, but you could spend a lot of time on this because this is literally one of the, like when you talk about what, what's wrong with Washington, okay, what's not, we get that. But one of the core things that happens on Capitol Hill, and you hear this every single day from fellow staff is uh, we're convincing our boss to do X or our boss is going to try to go rogue and vote this way. And, and members are almost universally more conservative than their staff members. True. And for a staff member to go make money, what is their what is their career trajectory? To be on the Hill and then to go over to K Street to go become a lobbyist. Well, you're not going to go become a lobbyist if, you're, if your member's not playing ball with the lobbying yeah. groups. And so it is a incentive structure for the staff to moderate their members and to vote as the lobbyists want so that they can then go make money off hill and so when you're talking about you know this whole topic 
One of the core things when we're talking about DC is staff members being more moderate, all for the incentive structure to go make money as a lobbying. And it happens Especially every day. chiefs of staff. Yeah. Because they have been there for so long in the swamp, in this bipartisan, like, well, that's what they try to like claim it is, mm -hmm. but it's really lobbying world. And it's the chief of staff that like, you'll get a very, you know, cons real conservative member of Congress. And, and it's the chief that's pulling them away and, and trying to make them vote a different way. Nonsense. It makes me, it, ma it makes me wonder, because we know when, uh, uh, the big deal with Kevin McCarthy was that he controlled the funds. Mm -hmm. They would decide if you got reelected or not. So everyone's trying to play ball with mm -hmm. this guy who's barely getting anything done. Granted, I'll give I'll give him some respect. You know, Thomas Massey said that he was able to get some things through, like uh, a reduction in the budget, a one percent reduction if they did a continuing resolution. So it's like, okay, you know, I like Thomas Massey. Disagree with him on some things, but when you look at that, I have to wonder. Then you see Matt Gates, and there's a reason why Matt Gates is not beholden to the GOP establishment because he has a base, he has supporters. He gets small donations. He doesn't need the lobbyists. Yeah. So if you can command your own income, you are free from that. Granted, they will all hate you because you're yeah. outside of that. But I'm hoping that with the, the way the internet business model and subscription models have been going, maybe we will get to a point where you will have more, look, for better or for worse, AOCs and Matt Gates's. Mm -hmm. AOC also, small donors online. She doesn't have to, but she loves to play ball. So she's a not, not the same story, but, you know, get more independent uh, funding for these. And I was members. on his staff when he made that decision to switch from accepting any sort of donations from PACs and lobbyists to basically being completely free, he gave a whole CPAC speech on it. And I did not understand at the time why it was such a big deal for him because I didn't understand how it operated in Washington. But he was totally free and independent from anybody influencing his vote and pulling the strings at that point from I, the I, corporate world. To be fair, he already had committee assignments at that point, though, right? So I had a member of Congress that I worked for who was a newer member. He decided not to vote for McCarthy the first time McCarthy ran, went the one where he dropped out. And he got penalized for years yeah. and stuck on terrible committee assignments as punishment. And until he started walking the line and becoming less Freedom Caucus, mm -hmm. right, then... It, like he got nothing and no no money, no not being paid attention to, nothing. Dude, I would get expelled in two seconds if I was ever in Congress. Oh, yeah. There's no reason for someone like me to ever be involved in government. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's true for a lot of people, actually. I think if you take the average plumber and say, you're going to be in Congress, he would be expelled in 10 minutes because he's going to yeah. walk in and he's going to start yelling at people and be like, what is wrong with all of you? What is this? Well, like Joe the be plumber. be like, get out. Yeah, and the reason that Gates was able to keep his committee assignments, and he he tells this story, I don't want to steal it from him, but he walked into leadership's office on like one of the first days of being a member or Dang, being up in the story. I'm sorry, but this is no, my, this is the guy. Story, story. And, and he basically <laughs> said, I want to be on House Armed Services Committee, and I G believe that I should be, well, not yet. He, he said, I want to be on House Armed Services Committee predominantly because my district has the most active duty men military veterans in the United States. And so I think that I'm qualified to be that. And leadership looked at him and said, well, you're not doing enough work across the street, it looks like. And basically, if you wow. were to come in and give $250,000 over the next few weeks, we might be able to consider what committee assignments to put you on. Yep. And Gates said something to the effect of, what if I wrote a check right now for $500,000? And they went, what other a committee would you like to be on, Congressman? And he paid double for both. So double you have both. bids on committees. Wait, wait, Matt Gates actually paid it. Yeah, yeah. He paid double. Wow. He paid double at the beginning. I have to imagine that his constituents, who are armed forces members, were like, "Well, that's great." I don't oh, think yeah. they Gates. I mean, they probably didn't know at the time, but right. But and, and then you know, it took years for him to be able to even go back and tell that story because when you first get up to Washington, you are shepherded in by leadership who introduce you to lobbyists who tell you how the game is played and say you are expected to do all of these things and make the rounds. And it's not even for the individual members. It's for the NRCC so that they right. themselves can raise the money through the Republican Party <laughs> so, and oh, then pour man. that back so let, into their let's priorities. Let's back this up, though, for the viewers. Let's, let's rewind and kind of explain what we're talking about here. Yeah. When we're talking about across the street, when we're talking about for the committee, we're talking about what we're talking about is Committees have grades, and I'm sure that this has been talked about before, possibly on this podcast. Oh, Committees so. have grades, A, B, and C, some like A minus, B plus, like things like that, but A, B, and C. These grades have nothing to do with power, with influence, with time you spend. It is all about how much money you raise on these committees. So you, the in Congress, the, the grade of a committee is 100% based on its ability to raise money. So for example, the Veterans Affairs Committee which does so much work for all of veterans yes. and for is like a C minus committee. No one wants on it. You can't raise a dollar on it. Yep. 
So it is a low. How do you how do you raise money? What does that what does that mean? So like say you work for energy and commerce, right? There's so many different things that go so that's through a committee. energy. Yes. Appropriations. Appropriations. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me make huge. a guess. Yeah. You're saying that I sit down with a lobbyist and say, I will get your bill that poisons baby kittens through if you put a million dollars, something like that. You don't even have to say that. You just say, Hey, I'm on energy and commerce. I know you'll have a lot that comes before the committee. We really appreciate your support. So if you say that, <laughs> that's exactly if you say that, it's about veterans. But here's the thing, though: <laughs> no, if you yeah, say right. that, it's corruption. But if they come and meet with you mm -hmm. and say, "We would like these priorities to be accomplished," Congressman, the Congressman will say, "Okay, well, I'll take it in consideration." And then they'll go meet with their legislative director and their chief of staff. And the chief of staff is normally on the campaign side. And the chief will say, "Well, if we vote for this bill, we will get a check from their political action committee within a matter of weeks." Wow. And so, if you explicitly say, "I will do this if you do this," it's corruption. Sure. But if you just show up and say what your wait, priorities wait, nudge, are. Nudge. A little nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Then it's totally fine. And wait, wait, so, what, what if you were like, "Oh, that's a that's a really pressing issue there, man. I'm so hungry, I can't even think straight. I don't <laughs> think I'd make a good decision unless I got a good steak, maybe with some gold flakes on it." Well, Congressman, like let's go. Let's go discuss it over lunch. But th there, <laughs> so there are some ethics restrictions. There are some. Yeah, yeah, you can't, so, you, so it's like what, ways to get so around. Who was it. the Congressman? Real, real quick, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, when when Matt Gates was here. We have like the best selection of boozes. Not the best. We have a good selection of booze. We've got we got Louis the Thirteenth over there for heaven's sake. And uh, Matt was like, "No way." I was like, "Feel free to have anything." He's like, I can't touch any of that stuff. He's like, "That's too good." Mm -hmm. And then he sat down and enjoyed his bottle of water or whatever he had. He was yeah. like, "No, we're not no. allowed to do that." Ethics rules. Um, Matt's, Matt's awesome. I'm a big fan. Yeah. So, um, and we, next time we talk to him, confirm that story. That is exactly the story I understand too. So get the on the paying double for the committees. But um, Gates but, is a little so, pissed at me right now. Though, uh, so yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but he's he's told that story publicly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, no, he's told he's told it publicly. And there's also a movie. We filmed a movie from HBO, The Swamp, the Swamp in our uh, office, and they followed us around. And these are all things that he told. So I'm giving credit to him. That's so wild, dude. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So here's it. So rewind. We talked about just how the corruption and, and how the money gets paid for the committees. Rewind to how it used to be. So it's still in practice the same thing, but uh, how it used to be. Literally, who was the congressman from Alaska that was there for forever that had the cool office? Don King, I believe. Don King. It's all right. He was the dean of the house. Yeah, he was the dean of the house. He'd been there for literally like 60 years, like before Nixon, like crazy. So, um, but he, uh, he was telling the story of the way, the way it used to work on ethics is, um, is literally they had, members had safes in their office and the lobbies would just bring cash. <laughs> The safes are still there. The safes are still there. The safes are still there. But yeah, literally, the, the lobbyists just used to bring cash, and they'd take the cash, put it in the safe, and that was... Now, you're not allowed to do that. You have to go have dinner at the Capitol Hill Club. That's or right. That's you right. Can, there's a loophole. You can do it on the House floor from member to member. Hey, look, I'm I'm, I'm with uh, Jenk Uger, who's been fighting the money and politics things for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think he needs to, uh, and I mean this with, 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 with respect, articulate his position on what they were talking about. Because the big thing they keep talking about is the ability to finance campaigns, mm -hmm. and it doesn't get to the core of what's being discussed right now with how Congress operates. So, you know, uh, Jank, the Young Turks, I think Kyle Kalinske was involved. They were very much like, we've got to get money out of politics. To the average person, like, what does that mean? If, if you go out and say, well, it's because these PACs are spending unlimited money to get people elected, we're like, yeah, yeah, we get that. People buy billboards. Mm -hmm. But if he was to come out and say, no, actually, the members of Congress are cutting backroom deals to get hundreds of, like, to get millions of dollars— and that's the only reason bills ever get done. Focus on that. And you're going to have everyone being like, sign me up. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember hearing a conversation in another office. Uh, they were debating. Uh, this is whenever I was like a lower level staffer in district. And I was up on a trip and I was seeing a friend and the office was discussing a vote. And I remember the chief talking to the LD and was like, hey, do you know how the member's going to vote on this? Well, we talked about this. So they're discussing a vote. And he was like, okay, well. What's the bid on it if he doesn't vote? And he said, I think that the PAC was at like 10 to 12 on these votes. So they were like, they knew the dollar amount that was being handed around based on the vote. And it was kind of like, we'll see what he does, but we know that it's going to impact about a 10 to 12K well, donation. Well, but also remember, that's not like your everyday, you, they're, they're not the ones on like the lower committees. It's not really happening like that on science, space and technology, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it's not happening on Veterans Affairs. So you, when, when you're thinking about these things, think about the higher level congressmen rather than the lower, because there's plenty of these like lower level members that are not doing any of this. There are good people that are still in Congress. Not that they don't want to.
But so, so <laughs> not saying that. I'm just saying so, that there's people that are not doing it. Matt, Matt Gates said, "What if I write you a check right now for 500?" He did. And so, but that's Matt Gates as a member of Congress personally writing a check from his own funds. Like, what does this from mean? His, from his from, no, from campaign. From so, campaign. Yeah, that, that's because all. You're, because it's you're all allowed, above board. The right, you're allowed donations. to transfer from campaign to the NRCC. Yeah. So that's what it is. So it's that's your dues and your bids. Are you uh, familiar with this? No, no, no. Tell okay, me. Okay, okay. So whenever you come up to uh, to DC, based on your district and your committee assignments, you are given a bid as a member of Congress. If you are from rural Georgia, you might get a hundred thousand dollar bid, hundred and fifty thousand dollar bid. But bid from what? For what? we'll get to that. If you are from Buckhead, Georgia, wealthy suburb of Atlanta, two fifty, three hundred, four hundred. Mm. Your bid is what you owe. What you owe the NRCC to be in quote good standing. The way this works is is um and and I. We could get to this later, but I think that the 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 establishment has lost a lot of power on Capitol Hill. The dollar contributed the yeah. the the way that money flows has totally been democratized, and I think that's a huge part of it. But what they still have is committee assignments, which is very important. And the way committee assignments work is you is you say to leadership what committees you want to get on, and you go before the com, the um, steering committee, the steering committee, and the steering committee will decide. Guess who gets to come in for the steering committee? So it's the committee, it's all these leadership swampy people. Speaker gets like five votes. Leader, uh, the leader of your party gets like four votes. Everybody else gets one vote. But the head of the NRCC comes in and every single person who's requested to be on a committee, like an important committee, they don't care about the unimportant ones, but a, an A-list committee, a high fundraising committee, before they take a vote, they ask the NRCC where are they add on in their standing. And they will tell them how much their bid was and if they went over, under, and where they're at, and then all of them factor that in when they go to vote for that person onto that committee. So wow. whenever so whenever we're talking about meet his bid, pay the due, pay double, this is what we're all talking about. And it's also your fundraising ability. Like, that's what they're looking at. Like, are we going to put you on a bigger... Are, are you fundraising what you think you could get in your district effectively? Because if we're going to give you this spot where we know this money can come back to the NRCC... We're, we want to know that you're capable of actually going out, dialing for dollars, raising the money, and meeting with lobbyists. I would like these people to be in prison. <laughs> well, if this were a normal company, they probably would be. You know what's really but sad? But it's the United States government. <laughs> what's really sad is you yep. see these... Um, you know, people challenging incumbents and they're like, when I get down there, I'm going to be like this, right? And yeah. I'm going to, I'll never give in. And guaranteed a year or two years in, you're you're changing your whole it's life. It's Or they're expelled. Yeah. Or there's a few, <laughs> primarily in the Freedom Caucus. There's a few. The poor Freedom Caucus. I love I mean, Mar Caucus. Marjorie Taylor Greene was saying that uh, she, Massey, and others were forcing floor votes uh, and that that was pissing everybody off because it was pulling away from fundraising. Well, it was also, they, they wanted to go well, home. If, uh, on Wheels Up Day, she's got them out there yeah, doing so roll call votes. <laughs> well, they themselves were fundraising by doing what they were doing. <laughs> True. So True. There, there was, there's a good though. There. Good, good, good. No, good. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I just, I think it's ironic because that's true. Like, you know, you're actually on the house floor forcing people to do their job and therefore people see that. I'll donate to that. Yeah, exactly. So if, if, if Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor and, and, and these other, uh, you know, members of Congress, they get their donations, their fundraising from regular working people. Mm -hmm. I would gladly side with a million people are contributing to whatever. Mm -hmm. be it the NRCC or their campaigns, as opposed to fat cat lobbyists smoking cigars being like, here's what we want done in mm -hmm. D.C. So we realized after a few months of being on television and, and things like that, and in, in any congressional office that we did, we raised more money by having the principal on television than we would have raised by having television commercials or placing ad spins on digital and things like that. So why would we spend time trying to work with the consultants and things like that to get us a good commercial when we could just get free media on television and then get all of the small dollar donations yeah. and then you retain their emails so media. that you reach back out to them, their phone numbers, their contact information. You then build up your own list that you can sell to other campaigns and things like that. That's a huge You've got to build business. up your own and independent you operation. In the blackout, so if you good. don't build up your own independent operation, you are entirely beholden to the 
other like NRCC or the GOP themselves because you have to have an entity outside of you. So the members that are actually doing well on their own are doing it so they can build up their own operation and have independence from these organizations. And that's how they can circumnavigate the normal me, flow of the swamp. Let's, let's say you're rich and you own a company that's got a seven figure income every year with a hefty profit margin. I'm doing a lot of hy hypothesizing right now. Then you get into Congress <laughs> and you, what do you do at this point? You say like, I will remove myself as an officer of the company and hand the company over to someone else. Can you be the owner of a massive company like that while in Congress? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you can't, you're not supposed to run the day to day. Now it happens all the time. Yeah. Barbara owned a, uh, a restaurant while she did it. Uh, yeah. uh, Andrew Clyde owns like an armory, like a legit like armory. It's super cool. But he did that. And so you have to kind of like remove yourself from the day to day. Um, in some what? situations, you might have to divest from certain, like, you know. So the, the, the reason I ask is, what if someone goes into, uh, someone runs a, you know, a seven figure, uh, or let's say eight figure uh, company. They're, they're like a principal at Boeing or something, and then they sit on the, you know, and, but, household but, services. But committee. then when when they're like, hey, have you have you raised this much money for the NRCC? They go like, I can have my the CEO write you a check tomorrow. How does that sound? Is that do they do things like that? Oh yeah. Yeah, but I feel like it's most just, of the rich ones still fundraise. There's not that like if if you have eight million dollars of personal wealth, but you have to donate hundreds of thousands of dollars every year, then you're not going to want to write that out of your own paycheck. Now, if people have hundreds uh, of millions well, of dollars, but but you know, I mean, you get on the right committee. You could see the writing on the wall and make a hefty investment and say NVIDIA but and then be up 30% in seven months. <laughs> it's but, true, but then people are selfish in, innately. So they're going to want to try to find other ways around and that. And rich like, people have rich friends. Mm -hmm. So they just get them to pay it. Yeah, so there's yeah. The, people don't want to give their own money often. Some people mm. can, but maybe I'd say a it's dozen. Very it's it's very rare. And even in that case, they're like, this is my money mm -hmm. and I don't want to give the, it all. Yeah, well, well the, I imagine the attitude is going to be like, I'm not going to pay for it. You guys want something for me that I've got for sale. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that. Then the rich friends are you're like treated better saying. too. If you're in that mm -hmm. world, the money will just come naturally just, because, I mean, I would imagine that business partners who want to do business with somebody in the future would just contribute to a congressional campaign. And if individuals are capped at a certain amount of dollars, then they're not going to have to give that much to remain in good graces with the business people. 2,700, right? 2,700 per person, person, yeah. person yeah. primary like, in for general. rich people like this, like ain't nobody caring about the 2,700. No, they, they put it in a pack. Yeah, it's all pack but, money. Yeah. $2,700 is... Individual These members look at twenty seven hundred dollars like and they just go like, okay, it's like okay, it's a ten dollar okay. bill for us. They yeah. see like fifteen to twenty and up, mm -hmm. and they go, oh, I should give them a phone call. So, are you guys saying that if I want to get a law passed, I just gotta write a big check and then wiggle it in someone's face on a committee and then they'll do it? No, yeah. it doesn't work like really. That. It's not that easy. Come on, it's no. not. It's it, not that. It, easy. It's not that easy. So you can, if you want to, if you got a million dollars behind some issue. And you want to spend it to get something to happen. You can get movement. You can get a committee hearing. You can get some press conferences. You can get some action on the Hill. But to get a law through the House, through the committee, on the floor, through the House, to the Senate, you got to get you got to get all of them to wake up on the same day at the same time and go vote. Uh, it's that a million dollars, you know, or five. Or and your bill will never see the light of day. But, but yeah. that being said, so remember how he was saying that your the staff members pushed the the, mem the staff members push the member of Congress to vote certain ways because they want to go work for these other lobbying groups. So what happens is they make friendships. They go out to receptions and dinners and mm -hmm. they make friends with these lobbyists and they start thinking like, I want to go work for X company. Mm -hmm. And so then they tell, X company tells them their priorities, the committee, so there's committee staff separate from your office staff. More okay? powerful. More powerful, right. And so the committee staff is all being having these same type of relationships. And so then they're the ones that are kind of helped driving to push that forward too. Mm -hmm. So that's the other way lobbyists influence so, the staffers, which but drive if you have, the what, member what, as well. If you haven't played ball with House leadership and the campaign fundraising, then you're also not going to see your bill on the House floor. You like won't if, even get co like What if, if, yeah, what if, we, had, what if we, we had a convention of states to amend the Constitution and said... All this is done. Do you think that would improve things? Convention of states makes me really nervous because of all of the other things that they could tangle. No, no, with. for sure, for sure. But let's just say, uh, because I want to, I'm, I'm focused on like fixing Congress. I understand there's risks with the convention of states, 
But let's, so uh, for those who are not familiar, there is there are a couple ways to amend the Constitution. Congress can do it, goes to the Senate, you need like a two-thirds majority. Or it can go, uh, what is it, two-thirds of states, call a convention of states, mm -hmm. and then they vote each state on, uh, on amendments to the Constitution. So let's say they did. And the only thing that happened was they said, no more tying committee seats, no more bids, no more, no more fundraising tied to committee positions. That is unconstitutional from this point forward. What do you, you think you would happen? You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. I mean, you would have to do it every year, but you could just literally change. So remember back whenever McCarthy went to 16 votes or whatever it was, <clears throat> a lot of that was about house rules. Yeah. And, and a part of that was negotiations on committee assignments and other things. But, but the, the reason I bring up convention of states is because Congress is not going to do this. We, we, the states would have oh, to force Congress to stop doing this. But who's in the states? Who in the states would be the ones that would be trying to move forward? State this senators, change? state legislators. And they are just as heavily influenced on the state level as the federal yeah. level. And they're probably all trying to get to that federal level anyway. So why are they trying to shortcut change where they're trying to get to? You see what I'm saying? Everyone I, wants you know, a piece I, of the I, pie. I don't, I don't, do you really think that most state reps want to be federal reps? They uh, want to advance in their political careers. And it, yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to find enough of them to group together to create substantial change in most of these states. And now there's really good efforts. There's like the State Freedom Caucus, Caucus Network that's that's doing really good work to try to actually accomplish change and be good conservatives on the state level themselves. But by and large, it's just extraordinarily difficult. If you don't band together, then you're just what like the House of Cards, you cleave from the herd. Like yeah. you're gone. I, I'm just, we're <clears throat> speculating, of course, but my guess is if you went to state reps and state senators throughout America and said, hey, your congressman is going to retire. Uh, like in Colorado, I think that they uh, for they don't do a special election. They appoint someone and then they can run for re-election. Yeah. And they said, hey, your congressman is going to retire. Would you like to be appointed? I think 50 percent. Yes. So, yeah, more than 50. Yeah. Even county commissioners and all. Yes. Yeah. 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 They, they, so just a, your question about advancement. Yeah, they want it. Everyone's you know, principles you know what, fly out the window. When I have, you I have an power. idea. They want the prestige more than anything. I don't think it's necessarily the money at first. I think they want to say, oh, I work for, con I'm, a con I'm a congressman or I'm a congresswoman. I have an idea. You just hear me out. Here's what we do. All right. Okay. All right. Let's so go. <laughs> when uh, you have a, you'll, you'll have a group of like political establishment people, suit wearing guys, but they're not in politics. They work for the, the fundraising organizations. And whenever someone peeks their head up saying like, I want to be in this role, what you do then is you they're say- <laughs> You say yes right this way, and when they walk into the room, the room is actually. You ever see those those bits where like they'll have a room and they'll push it up to a porta potty, and then when the guy walks out, he's in an office. You ever see that? That's actually like a viral yeah. video. That's what you do. It's like right this way to my office, and we'll mm -hmm. discuss getting you set up for Congress. They walk in, the door closes in the back of a U-Haul, which yeah. drives them to like Southern Florida, and then there's like a big wall. We we put them on the other side and say you 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 live here now with the alligators. Wait, 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 no, I mean you, you're comfortable. We'll, we'll get you a nice chair. You have a coconut. Deep we put them in the villages. Stay, stay, there's stay some villages away. down there. Stay away from us. Deport we them. don't want people who <laughs> want to be in this position like you. Yeah. We want people who feel a duty and feel like they have to be there. I think that most people, to be fair, I've worked for three really good human beings and members. And, you know, when they get there, they don't, they, they did it because they love their country and they had good intention when they went. Mm -hmm. It's like that old saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? And so the more you tends get, to. the more you want. Tends power to. corrupts and absolute power tends there's to corrupt one, absolutely. There's one or two, two of the members that I worked for, I would say that, they don't really care about the flash and the stuff like that. One was, they called him like a workhorse as compared to a show horse. There are those. He really cared. Um, the one liked the fame and the stuff like that. But I don't think that they all go in with those intentions. And you could see it by like what their messaging is and who they were when they run. I don't, I don't there, think there, I, there's, all like that. there's an additional quote that was uh, well after the first one. And it's, it, I forgot who said it. It's it, They said, it is not that power corrupts, but that absolute power attracts corruption. So my other idea, and and this one I think is a good idea. After as you, opposed to your other idea, the other idea <laughs> I like was the first one. There's I like a good that one. one. This one's better. Uh, <laughs> we make it so that you can only term limit, and after your term is over, I think Congress four years, one one time, and as soon as you're done, you get shipped off to an island and Absolutely you are not. excised from public life. No. It's okay. not going to work. So I, that's Stanford's, not gonna, don't, so Stanford's don't like term limits that way. The mass, no, 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 but it's not, it's, not, it's not so much about the term limits. It's about as soon as you're, you, like, as soon as you're done in Congress, you are excised from the United States. You can no longer participate. You can't work here. You go I'll to an island. settle for a simple, you're not allowed to lobby. That would be a good one. But I mean, like. I like that. Yeah. My Stanford's thing is, too. 
You have to sacrifice. <laughs> you, yes, staffers too. You have to sacrifice <laughs> your life in society in mm -hmm. order to run for office. When you are done with your run in office, you are no longer allowed to, you're, you're gone. You are not in the, you, you are, you are sent off to a colony somewhere where you will live comfortably for the rest of your days with no TV and no one will ever hear from you again. See, the problem is, is that there's a learning curve to going to the Hill, right? So when you get down there, it, it's it's to every two years. So the first year as a freshman, you're learning the ropes and whatever. Where the bathrooms are. Right, exactly. It's it's You're learning everything. And I, I don't think anybody really knows what it's like there until you go and you're an intern and then an LC and then a, you know, LD, LA, LD. And then you get the soul sucked out of you. Correct. Then, yeah. But 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 what you're learning Mitch the McConnell ropes. walks into your office and just grabs you and drains the soul from your body. But you no, really are. Just I'm just going to need you. He just looks at you. He just looks at you. You're like, oh! <laughs> I'm just going to need you really to stand still for a moment. Please. Learning the ropes. <laughs> He <laughs> just he just, just stands soul, in, soul, in the soul, door soul, of the soul. office without saying anything. His eyes are looking the wrong direction, <laughs> but you feel the energy being drained as all the staffers I writhe do, on the ground. All right, I, I just need I need some. All right, but all serious. Serious. Lisa's got a point I'm to make. So wait, no, but you didn't like my Mitch McConnell impression. I did, I did. But so no, I got listen, so many more. It's so because good. Like, I feel this. I feel this as a staffer, and I feel this like for the members too. So the first year you're, you're learning even where the bathrooms are, what's going on, where you park your car, where the subway is. Yeah, all of it. Right. I don't ride the subway. Yeah. No, 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 no. The, the sandwich shop. There's, there's, oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Oh, there's, and there's the, a sandwich and shop. Longworth's cafeteria is yeah. better. Yeah, okay. Continue, continue. Okay, continue. but anyway. We have derailed every time. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but then the second year, then it's back, to, then it's fundraising because you have to run again, right? So then the first year is learning, the second year is fundraising. And so if you're saying that there's term limits, that's every two, like they, they can only have one, one term or two terms, they're not going to get enough accomplished. They're, it's just not going to happen. Realistically, a two Senate, 12-year House could allow the House to function and do term limits. My problem with term, I get both sides of it. My problem with term limits is if you do term limits on members, staff, especially committee yeah. staff that are already so powerful become more powerful. And then if you get rid of term limits, on, if you do term limits on both, then you have no institutional, long-term institutional knowledge, and that's not healthy. And so I hate to be like a Debbie Downer of all problems, no solutions, but that's the situation. What if, what if after two terms, the member and all of their staff are fired out of a cannon into the sun? Okay, so here's the other thing. So the, but, the, but then, but then <laughs> you're saying, <laughs> but then you're saying they can't go lobby. So you, your options after you leave the Hill are almost, it's either go into consulting, go into lobbying or government affairs, and that's it. Your other, everywhere else, you're pretty much unhirable. The, the, the skills aren't compatible anywhere that, else. That was a Futurama joke, by the way. I stole that. I, you know me. I know no pop culture references. but 24-year-old joke. <laughs> 24. <laughs> but still, didn't know it then either. But no, like, so I think that I, I think that a good place to start would be raising salaries for staffers, number one, mm -hmm. so you're not getting, like... Uh, salary uh, salaries on the hill got raised after you left. Oh, uh, as soon as I leave, sal are you ready for this it now? The, it was the here's dumbest a, thing to. Here's, here's some inside baseball. Money, so. Here's some inside baseball. What was your first? Before you say that, what was your first uh, time on the hill? What was your salary? Thirty five thousand dollars. I was thirty six. So I was thirty three, thirty thousand, mm -hmm. but. I was given an extra three thousand dollars to make sure that I have comfortably moved in, but then I realized it was as if it was a thirty-three thousand dollar a year salary. So I got maybe like four hundred bucks a month, yeah, extra, yeah. and then that was taken away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you can't, can't afford to live in you DC. You can't and live off of that. I got so lucky. they changed. So they did a bunch of stuff. They changed the rules. Minimum salary on the house is now forty-five thousand dollars a year, even for staff assistant. And but here's the thing. Uh, this is maybe. People don't care about this, but this is inside baseball. That's what we're talking about on this pod. Uh, the MRA, that is the fund, the pot of money that the whole office operates off of. Mm -hmm. You give or given a pot of money for two years, a congressional term. Um, that went up in the house by 19%. So we're Ooh, talking I I multiple, was, I was hundred, there for that. multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, a couple years ago and did not go up at all in the Senate. So now ha traditionally Senate staffers get paid way more. How staffers are getting paid way more than Senate wow. staffers now because they got a 19% bump so, in Senate. So what, what do you do with this money? Like, so, so what, what's the total amount a member of Congress will get for their office when they- It's a couple million. Two, it's, it's two point million. something. Yeah, it and depends on the size of your office. So if you're, if you're in leadership, it's more. <clears throat> right. But I think it's around, I think it's around like two I, to 5,000 per, could, two to 5 yeah. million per office. So could, with that office- Could or, they choose to just pay their staffs a ridiculous amount of money? Mm -hmm. Oh, they could, there, but instead- so, There's no, a cap. Capped. 
it's capped, There's and a that limit. cap went up whenever we right. were saying passed. Now, chiefs of staff can make more than members. Correct. Wow. But if you go over a certain threshold, you have to do a financial disclosure and are capped from making outside work. So you what, the, do you, what do you what do you do with this money? Like pay for the office? everything, everything, so you pay your for your offices. rent, your supplies, your mailers, your mailers. I hate mailers. Wait, what? Mailers. You know how uh, you get those postcards in the mail? Okay, no, I know, but like, isn't that campaigning? No. So, okay. Oh, here, that's uh, <laughs> you got a bunch of cop corrections right, so, here. So, so, so there's a whole system surrounding this that, frankly, not many members take advantage of because they're not aware of it because they're like, this is campaigning. But you can run Facebook advertisements to your district. TV with advertisements. TV advertisements, radio advertisements. Radio advertisements. You can basically campaign, but it's on the stuff that the official congressional office can do. So it's like, are you having trouble with your Social Security benefits? You can call my office and i will help you i'm congressman wow. Ball, and i'm you know but forget just social security minutes you could say all right so here is, is a campaign ad uh you know we uh, passed i'm luke border. ball i'm luke ball and if you vote for me i'll secure well, the border you that's a campaign ad you can't say that you can't say so that, you yeah. say i'm luke ball and i'm voting to secure the border taxpayer dollars yep yeah there's franking the, everything has to go through like franking wow. approval but but what happens is is that there's a blackout period so that's why it's harder for people to run against incumbents because they have access to all these people that's paid for not out of campaign funds, but out of the MRA, which is taxpayer dollars. What does MRA stand for? Members something allowance. Yeah. yeah. Let's Google it. But, but then real, the, I, the I only stipulations they really have is uh, the wording, like we said before. And then there's that blackout period. Rep members representational allowance. Yeah. yeah representational. So 90 days before a primary or before the general election, you can't use the MRA to to communicate with constituents. And this is how they get around the loophole. They consider it communicating with constituents and not, you know, campaigning, right? Up until 90 days before a primary or before a general election. And so what they do is they'll say, they talk about constituent services, the bills they've passed, all they do telephone town halls. So think about all that money just to send out a mailer to like 70,000 people is like $35,000, right? Like it, it's, you could pay for like 10 more staffers on what you just do on mailing budgets. So here's a, a good overdue it story. There's a congressman from Georgia, Paul Brown. He got to, he gets elected in a special election. Big upset. Wasn't supposed to win. He's in a real competitive reelect. He sends out 14 full voter database ma mailers. That's about 20 to $30,000 a pop. He sends out 1400 like grand. Yeah. Bankrupts his office had to let staffers go because he sent out so many mailers. <laughs> Wow. Dude, I don't know. I don't know who's not paying attention. But while you're sending these out, you can have surveys where they write back or they, you know, take a QR code and go. And then you build your list. That's when you list build. Mm. So now you can reach all those people on your list through um, newsletters or any type of communication during that blackout period, too. So basically, if people opt in, you get well, to communicate. What do you them. need yeah. staffers for? Like, what, what, what do they do for Everything? the member? <laughs> All yeah, the so work. <laughs> what do you need members for? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about the hierarchy of the congressional office. You've got the member. The chief of staff is the person that basically is directly accountable to the member and then handles everyone else in the office. Generally, there's a deputy chief of staff. Sometimes there's not. Under that is a communications director and a legislative director. And that's kind of the two splits in an office. There's also operations and scheduling, but that kind of will fall under its own unique category. The legislative side... With legislative assistance, the legislative director and the legislative correspondent will deal with, just as it sounds, writing the bills, getting the bills you know, introduced into Congress. Primary job there, reading and vote rec. Congressman, here are these four bills this week. So, so basically how it operates is, imagine you had this like, I don't know, small to medium sized company where there was one person who was on camera complaining all the time, but that made all the money and then everyone else did the work. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically like what we do. You have to think about it. <laughs> you have to think exactly about it this right. way. Like there's yep. so many bills that are introduced and he like the member cannot be an expert in an issue area mm. on all of it. I mean, he would just some be members sitting do. Reading. Some members do. Very few. Very, very few. few. But but to be a, a subject expert in everything that comes up is mm. is pretty hard to do. So, so they rely heavily on their legislative assistants and the legislative directors. And then legislative correspondent takes care of all the intake about like 
constituents writing in and what goes back out to them. And when you're in the minority, you're basically just messaging the entire time. So Madison took a lot of flack for basically saying, I've built my staff around communications, but he was doing it while we were in the minority. So any legislation that's written is strictly communications. In Gates' right. office, um, there was one bill that was written that would basically strip Adam Schiff of his um, uh, yes. security briefing. And so we named it the Pencil Act after <laughs> Pencil Negative. It was preventing extreme negligence with classified information. Who came licenses. up with that? <laughs> I came up with the acronym. Um, Matt came up That's and the, the ledge shop came up with the whole concept itself. But we introduced that. And then he got on Tucker. He got on, you know, a ton yep. of media. You could not Google Adam Schiff without it being the first 25 gotta, results. That I was going to say, like, you know, Laura Loomer ran in Florida, but I think she ran in like a D plus district. I don't know if you guys know exactly where. I think it was Democrat plus. She she lost to a Republican and that Republican holds the seat today. So it may really? not be R really? plus two. I think two, it's yeah. probably like a R plus blonde or two district. I yeah, think. I but think it's a DeSantis, title. I think, also overhauled the congressional maps that are still hmm. in place. Currently. I, I'm, I'm just thinking no one is better at getting press than Laura Loomer is. Yeah, that's a that's a fact. I mean, when she chained herself to the Twitter doors, she. Oh, why do you think leadership didn't want her in there? Yeah, they can't. CLF they could, spent an enormous amount of money. Really? Yeah. Fund. Wow. Because yeah. yeah. we're, we're talking about how to raise money. And I'm like, you know, Matt Gates can raise money from his constituents and from his fans. But Laura Loomer took some illegal immigrants and jumped over Nancy Pelosi's wall at her house. <laughs> like that, that is, I'm, I, I. But she's not the type that would give it back to the NRC. No, exactly, exactly. She's right. the type would be like, "I'm in charge now." She'd like, "Look at me, I'm, I am the captain." I'm, yes, captain. I am the captain. Yeah. Right. But that, but that's exactly it. I they want will Laura not Loomer. Let her. I want Laura Loomer in com Congress only for the MTG versus Laura Loomer fights. <laughs> they despise one another. They sure do. They yeah, are but always going at each other's throats. That, that's they, the one I want. That I, I, I agree. That would be interesting. But I really think, man, could you imagine Laura Loomer just like up there yelling at the Democrats? Yeah, Imagine because you were there last I night. M I know. Yeah. M MTG. Yeah, it's funny. We'll see them go at it. But no, like the reality is when Adam Schiff does anything, I mean, now he might be in the Senate. So, but when, when P Pelosi is getting all this money, I mean, yeah, Laura Loomer in, in Congress would have been very good. And that's probably why the Republicans and Democrats went nuts in insulting her and calling her a bunch of names. Yeah. yeah. She'd raise money like no other person. She would beat out AOC. Probably. Yeah. A I mean, a a AOC is the AOC, internet's candidate. AOC pulls money. Yep. Like real money. Like she raised $2 million in 36 hours for relief in Texas. Nothing to do with her. She was like, hey, y'all, whenever Texas had like the freeze or whatever, you can check the numbers. That could be wrong. But it was yeah, something like multi-million dollars for another state far away, a red state, whenever like a storm came through. Has That's, she quieted down or has the media stopped down. covering her? She quieted down. I wonder, they I, all do eventually. I realized the other day yeah. that she must be playing ball a little bit or something she's for her playing to, ball. to calm down because now she's not in the news cycle anymore. She's not even the boogeyman in Washington. Think, I think they went to AOC and said, you can be the next speaker. You will be the leader. In fact, you are possibly going, going like you're going to be big Senate maybe. But you've got to play ball. I don't think there's no way she ever becomes speaker. She could be Senate or even president. 20, 30 years, but, she but, could be speaker. No, no, no. You don't I, think so? I don't think so. Because this, the thing is, what it takes to run nationally or statewide and what it takes to be speaker are two. There is a reason that the speaker and majority leader of the Senate are usually some of the two m least liked right, people right, right. throughout the United States. She I is agree, liked. Agree. Her ability is to speak to the people. But, uh, but I, I, I not get her colleagues. Fair, good point. I agree. I agree. On the speaker, you're you're trying to get as many like Mike Johnson, right? He's not right. he's not Matt Gates. But I I bet they went to AOC and they said you could be the the you you could be the leader of the Democratic Party when you're when you're 60, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. But you've got to play ball. Mm -hmm. And she, and AOC because very right away when she gets elected, she's this radical progressive. Israel Palestine was a big issue. And then I remember as soon as she wins the primary, before she's even in Congress, she's giving this interview where she's now she's playing middle of the road on Israel Palestine. And she got attacked by the left for it because they're like, we knew it. We knew it because AOC knows she has constituents who are pro Israel. And she probably talked with Democrat leadership and they said, this will end your career before it starts. Mm -hmm. I'm also willing to bet that as soon as she gets in, she she's quieting down now. They probably said, how would you like to be Democrat Party leadership in 15, 20 years, be the most well-known politician in this country, make a real difference. Remember that video she put out where she's like, 30 years from now, here's what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they said, because you have two options. It's this cartoon where you have gray hair and you're on the train and everyone knows your name and you've changed this country or you're a bartender struggling to get your retirement. So, 
and that's not her they're saying that to. That's every member when they're like somebody says they're going to be in the Freedom Caucus, come up and not play ball. Every single person they say, do you want to make noise or do you want to make a difference? Now, now, now it would yep. be a real shame for none of your legislation to hit the floor. And we want to see that. You got that piece of bill. Yeah, that's a good bill. We want to see that at the floor. But we've got to fix some things. And this is the kind of conversations that. So I just, I, I'm going to go out on I, a limb. I, I, real quick. The way you're describing this. It makes me really want to be in Congress. No, exactly. Yeah. And so so <laughs> really we were not. talking about her changing. I, I don't know, but her chief of staff that she had when she first came on to Capitol Hill left in yep. a pretty public way. Who's her chief of staff now? And what did he work for before? Isn't it functionally her husband? He runs all of the unofficial staff. I don't know, right? but I wonder if the staff that surrounded her were aligned with leadership to quiet her down and put her in line. Because they, I think they have so much enormous power by coming around somebody who's brand new to Congress and very young to actually influence the direction of the Leadership will do staffer coups. Whoa. So they did that with the Republican Study Committee. So we know the Freedom Caucus now, right? The Republican Study Committee, RSC, used to be the Freedom Caucus. It was the organization that pulled Republicans to the right. Yep. And what they did was, is they is it was actually Boehner did a coup. He replaced the staffer. The staffer that was there, he was like, became like, very powerful as a staffer and was like moving legislation, changing bills single-handedly, like very powerful. They got him out. They uh, did a, a change in leadership. This is whenever Tom Graves was running against Scalise and they got a leadership friendly person in and ran and took it over. All that to say, they got a staffer change first and they will do these moves where they will get staffers in positions to fix problems. What I meant to say when it makes me want to be in Congress is that I'm a shithead. And I would just make everyone's day so miserable in every possible way. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like the more I hear about how awful these people are, I'm like, man, I really wish I could just make their days worse. Yeah. But I could probably do that more effectively with having a big show. So I'll just, I'll endeavor. I will, I will endeavor to there make the lives you, of these. You could ruin their day by like picking one member of Congress right now that you're pissed off at and then read off the office's phone number <laughs> and say, everyone <laughs> call this. Now we've said this and now I'm going to be the one responsible for. Oh yeah, here we go. Completely ruining. All right, let's go. Here we going forward, we're just going down a list of people. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like how There's this. Too many. Is it's 104. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to narrow that down. Wait, yeah. can we do the 40 instead of this? I mean, I, that's a good one. And how like... every representative voted when it comes to expelling George Santos. Oh. It's really, really easy, my friends, for me to go to the list and be like, let's pick someone who voted not to expel Santos, and then encourage people to support that person. So Marjorie Taylor Greene or like Thomas Massey, Jim George. It's easy. And and, and the funny thing is. Am I gonna am I gonna single out a Democrat? Well, no, they're Democrats. We that the problem is the Republicans that voted to expel uh, George Santos. So uh, let me just make sure we have all of our details correct. Mr. Santos, uh, 105 Republicans voted yes, and so we I will expel them. Who does it, do, do either one of you want to pick a name at oh, random? Oh, right there at the top. Which one? Go back up. And now be careful. Dan Crenshaw. <laughs> <laughs> Say any names. <laughs> now, now we gotta be careful. We, we can all right agree on that. Be civil. We can all agree when on you that. speak to these people. Yeah, be very polite. Be very Never kind call and above and board. Ask them why they support. Didn't he do gun control? But we support. Find a zip code that is in their is district, or flag they can laws? hang up on you. Something? Red flag laws. Red flag was, was this red, pro red Doesn't flag issue? laws? I, I be think. Nice. I don't want to. I don't want. If I'm not sure, I don't want to say yes though. But forty th over this, forty percent of his primary just voted against him again. I'm not. Wait, really? Yeah, yes. he almost he lost, lost in his primary. primary so he. Oh, he, so kind of just won his primary. Yeah, barely. Oh, okay. So we had Jameson Ellis on. Okay, nice. He so, got like forty-four percent of the vote against uh, an incumbent. Wow. We very Millions. hard to do. Okay, so so uh, I want to make sure this is very very clear. When they're saying be polite, one hundred percent. You know, I, I I didn't do congressional stuff. I did nonprofit fundraising. I will tell you this: if you are angry, click. Don't mm -hmm. care what you have to say at all. If you are stupid and confused, they get worried. I I, I can't speak for Congress, but if someone called up and said, "Uh, I heard that you guys are supporting bad thing." I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not supporting bad thing. But it says here uh, you did bad thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. They get really, really worried about if someone is really dumb sounding, that means regular people are hearing something that is bad for us. And those people like passionate, angry people, they, they, they OK, we get it. But regular people, that's what's scary. So these nonprofits would do postcard mailers where they would send out 
a 20 year old with 10 postcards each to get them signed. What happens? A member of Congress gets a pile of 3,000 yes. postcards on one day, and they're very, very generic. And they're like, okay, okay, we've got a campaign running against us. When, whenever we would get someone screaming at us, it's like, you don't matter. You're not no. convincible. I have no, there's no reason to argue with you. But if you sound stupid and confused, I might be able to win you over. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the same for you guys. In no, politics. exactly. And, you know, we encourage participation in the entire process and calling in and having a conversation. First of all, you're going to speak to a first line staffer who doesn't know what on earth is going on half the time anyway. And they're not going to be able to basically pass along the message or even be incentivized to do it if you're calling and screaming at them and cussing at them. Because then there's generally sometimes a policy in the office, or at least there was in my office, was like if they're just cursing at you, that's not it's productive. Well, you hang up, you call and articulate your position and you say it and you give the information that's passed along to the member that is a civil participation in the entire process but an overwhelming yeah. amount of those people calling in can help sway in a particular direction on any given issue i will say that that's if you're in the district right because one of the first questions you'll get asked on, on the phone is what's your address or what's your zip code because they do not have to because of like the mra they do not have to waste their dollars on staffers paying a staffer to talk to people outside of their district so if you call up because i use to answer phones if you call up and you you're not in the district they can just hang up on you they yeah. do not have yeah. to speak to you yeah. at all can, can, can we this is a good list i'd like to go to a different list if we can yes can we go to the republicans that just voted for the cr republican <laughs> the 40 republicans that just voted to fund oh, no. nancy pelosi's face? government this is a continuation of all the funding it's, things she it's, wanted. It's, this one's uh, this one's a lot harder to search for because we'd have to go to like it, it just happened, right? Yeah, so we have to go to like Congress.gov. Um, oh, because it just happened. Congress.gov. Yeah. At what? Do we know what the bill number is for it? HR what? It's easy when you guys are here. <laughs> if you oh, go to Congress.gov, oh, no, we're still detoxing from the HR. I can't or just spell type HR in anymore. Continuing resolution. Yeah, it should come up, right? So go on the floor today. We it have would be yesterday, right? Or the day before? Yeah, just that, that's not it, isn't it? Tax relief, secure the border, life at conception act. Oh, how fun. Um, type up in there like HR and then Is I guess a... one of the guys will tell me what because I don't have a phone on me. Oh, maybe, maybe I do. Uh... Continuing resolution. Which one is it? All the congressional firepower in this one room. We can't well, I, I, I actually it was just yesterday. So I just here we go. Uh, are you sure it was yesterday? No. <clears throat> but it probably was. They don't pass these regularly. CRs don't pass regularly. Well, yesterday was Lake and Riley, biodetection, dental health, uh, expanding access to the Capitol, and, and fentanyl. All right, here, I'm going to find it just a second. Maybe it was... So, but this is one, this is one where, um, again, this is frustrating because I think a lot of us had a, a lot of hope for Mike Johnson coming in. And I speak of that as like, it was a kind of a... I like him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Um, he really is. And I don't just say that as like a throwaway. He's... March 6th. He really is a good Government man, yeah. funding, congressional record. Is this it? Yes. Uh, this is congressional record. Yeah, so then you go down. So uh, there should be a toggle on the top. It, says, it should say vote. Like, see how up there? I can't see it because I'm blind. See up there? Yeah. Uh, House of Representatives? Yeah. Yeah, go there and then go... This is your idea, Ben, so we're laying it at your... Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so, so then these... Some of these are amendments. Celebrating online. contributions of black women, congressional record. Yeah, these are amendments that they voted yes or no on, right? Yeah, so and this then, is not... So if I if I type in the continuing... No, you should have the whole thing. Like, there should be one on there where there, it's a yes or no vote on the whole thing. Well, how, what would it be titled? Because... I don't know. CR? I, I can't see anything. No, it wouldn't be that. It, it would be, what's the name of the CR? Congratulating athletes, congressional record. <laughs> see, see the stuff that Congress does on any given day? Is passing the... What these, day does that say over there? This is March 6th. Ah, dang it. I found it on the post and it's it's blocked. We don't this, have the bill number? behind a paywall? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so March 6th Why be 6 sending was... the post my money? Hold on, Negative. March 5th. Let's see. What day was it? March, the legislation, uh... Previous question. It looks like it was, okay. Is it this right here? Ago. Is it HR 6, 684? It's the minibus, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, natural gas, uh, continuing support. Th uh, last Thursday. Yeah, but I, I bill yeah, number. This I'm, website I'm looking is right not here. easy to. All right, well, anyways, forty Republicans pushed it over with all Democrats, basically all Democrats, to continue to fund Pelosi's spending. Is garbage. Is it expanding access to the Capitol Act? Is that it? I'm just going to text HR my wife. HR two seven nine nine. Whatever. I don't. Uh... What was the minibus? Oh yeah, that's I could have just minibus? texted my chief and asked her. You okay, so here's what they call it: delaying government that's shutdown. That's the website I was looking about. Washington Post. 
Mm -hmm. How each House member voted on delaying a government shutdown. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, that's what they're saying. I like shutdowns. I don't care. So you're, so these are the these are the people who voted, uh, did not vote. Are they Why saying not? support shut, supported the bill? Supported, supporting delaying a shutdown is supporting okay. the continued So let's resolution. get down to the, the, skip the blues. We want the reds. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Did you see who? Look who's uh I'm not gonna be responsible Ben I, Dan we, we Crenshaw these phone calls oh. the guys off. People really don't like Dan Crenshaw. I'm surprised <laughs> no. he won. So whenever I, his I fall from game. grace happened, the Freedom Caucus's comms chat was all just like couldn't have happened to a better guy. Like it was because we all knew, like those who were close to it knew that the base kind of conservatives loved him from the whole like ads he did and the whole like coming onto the scene against the SNL guy you and know, all that. Texas delegation you know, you know what we members need? don't even like him. We need a website where you can load two bills and then it'll show you who supported both. You know what I mean? Mm. So I could take the expelling George Santos and the continuing resolution, you could do a cross. load them both, and then it'll show you here are the members that voted yes on both and no on both. Yeah. Because then we could really take a look. Um, I will say this, though. Didn't, didn't they defund a great deal uh, federal agencies? Like, didn't Mike Johnson announce they're cutting like three to seven percent between like the, the CIA and ATF and stuff like that? Yeah, can you scroll down a little um, bit for me? I'm trying to look for something. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> You're looking for somebody. <laughs> I am. I'm like, oh, good. I mean, maybe should we, should it, we it just still didn't do anything on the border, which is the number one issue Americans care about right now. Steve Scalise voted in favor of it. Yeah, that's not super surprising. Yeah. Uh, I was however, for Weber, he didn't. Carol Love Miller him. of West Virginia voted yes, <laughs> and she voted no to expelling uh, Santos. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because you can basically have a list of people in leadership's office who know that if they pick up the phone and say, you must vote this way, mm -hmm. even if you want to vote in another way, and there's a term for that, it's called getting rolled. You basically mm -hmm. show up and you're going to vote one way and it's your conscience and you're going to vote your district. And they had a story of basically one member going down there and voting one way and he was trying to sneak out real quick, go to the bathroom <laughs> and Boehner taps him on the shoulder and is like, what are you doing? Like, you know you what wanna, the right vote for you is. Do you want to call Madison? I'll give him a call real quick. He hasn't texted me back. But. Ah, okay. It's, it's like early in the morning. You know I mean? what? He's I, still waking up. A long night. name in Florida is like... The other thing with seven. that is too, if there's like a, a, a tense vote where they're whipping votes and, you know, they, they know that they have the number they need to pass it and you want to be a team player and like vote hey, with that, but your district you would oppose, vote? you can forgo certain votes. Can I put you on like you could say, okay, I'm not going to vote for this one. It'll You're piss my district off. <laughs> you might have to talk about sex and orgies. But. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Madison Cawthon on the phone. <laughs> All right. Okay, Madison, you're on. Sam, how are you? Hey, what's going on, man? Thanks for calling in. <laughs> hey, man, anybody is friends with Luke Ball. Is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to claim that. We got uh, <laughs> we, we got a handful of people who were talking about just how DC works. And uh, I'm fascinated to find out how this bidding stuff works and how people spend money and how the story of Matt Gates having to spend half a million dollars to get the committees he wants. And then, of course, the, the, the subject of sex, drugs, and rock and roll came up, you know, and we were like, we got to call Madison. I was right across well, the hall from you, Madison. I was never invited. I'm offended. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> that really is offensive, I can imagine. Thank you. But I, I, I will say, when it comes to the bidding issues and the bidding wars, um, I mean, it, it's not necessarily like for every single committee there is a set price. Um, normally, for your A committees, you know, you have to raise either – half a million to a little bit higher than that for your B committees. It's like 300,000. And then your C, C committees, that's just where they put people who, who don't want to raise the money. But where, um, how, how do you get invited? So now to just kind of ruin the serious nature of your expertise, how do you get invited to the cocaine sex orgies? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'd just be the youngest person on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Madison, the youngest person is, it's like a Herbert the Perfect. You want you want to swing by my cocaine <laughs> sex orgy party, <laughs> Madison? Madison, Ben Stout here. Uh, question for you: We were just talking about members getting rolled and kind of swung on votes. What was the hardest leadership ever pushed on you for a vote, and who kind of executed? And what was that kind of process like for the hardest you ever got pushed on on a vote? You know what? The hardest I ever got a. a, a aggressively push was not necessarily about a vote it was actually about who my chief of staff was um i remember i, I it was wow. there I was we during, were literally just talking about that yeah it was during freshman orientation and it was like probably 10 30 at night i was in my in my office and then i got a call from a pretty high-ranking member i won't say their name because they're, they're not necessarily a bad person um 
and then went over down to their office, someone from my state, and uh, then they just kind of started telling me, well, this is, this is a list of people that we think would make good chiefs of staff for you, and then we'd know you're a team player. Wow. And then they kind of walked out what being a team player meant, and that, you know, you'd have the, uh, the support of the conference and everything. And I was like, ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's fairly obvious the machine did not like you. No, no. I mean, you know, it, it's just, it, and especially when you have the support of the people, that's the thing that they, they pretty much resent the most, just because then they know that then you, whenever you go out and try and start messaging, and, you know, Luke was running my communications and he was the best in the business. So it could really start pushing um, a lot of public opinion that would just kind of change a significant amount of things, I think, especially on Capitol Hill. Um, the, the, so that was. I think the perception that, uh, most of us have is that they 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 assisted in launching a primary against you because you were disruptive they didn't like you and they wanted to replace you yeah i mean it's pretty ridiculous when you have a uh, a high-ranking senator get involved in your own primary um wow. in your own state that's that was a uh, that's true a shocking blow but you know at, at the end of the day you know that I think I think you can always judge yourself by the enemies you make. And I hate most everyone in Washington D.C. So if I'm their enemy, <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. That's a bummer, though. It's 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 it feels like you know. With all due respect, to Thomas Massey, he still ends up defending McCarthy for a variety of reasons, mm -hmm. and he's talking about the concessions that he gets. You know, he mentioned that he got it, he got put in the, uh, uh, the 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 funding bill that. If it does go to a continuing resolution, everything drops by 1% and he'll take it. And I'm like, that's cool, but it doesn't really feel like we're getting anything done. It's, it feels like we're, we're chipping away at a, mo at a monolith. You know, you took out a little pebble with a little hammer and it's not really changing much. And you know what? The thing that's most frustrating about that is for the last you know 30 or 40 years, we, have, we, we kind of have inherited a, a, a movement that has just kneeled the knee every single time to say, Oh, we'll give up six inches here. We'll give up six inches there. And to where now, when we are the ones who are having to actually deal with this, we're several miles behind where we started uh, back, you know, in the 1960s. And so at that, at that point, it's like, you know what, unfortunately we don't have time to make these little, you know, genteel politics, small minor changes to the things we need radical change and we need to rock the boat. Madison, I got a question for you real quick, and I know you probably got to go soon, but um, here's a question for you. We know that we know the rock stars. We're talking about the people that are loud. We know, you know, Matt Gates and, and others who are loud and out there out front. Um, but who are some people that you are like, that's a person I would follow. That's a person who's here for the right reasons or who thinks intellectually or things like that that may may not have the same platform. Who was somebody who left actually being like, who you know, again, another one, Byron Donalds. We know he's great, but he's also out front. Who's the person who you left being like, they're super solid, but a lot of people don't know it? Uh, you know what, uh, Phil, I, I mean, you said Byron Donalds. He's my favorite. That's literally why I moved out of Florida after I got done. But I, I would say people who are less known uh, would be a guy named Tim Burchett. Um, okay. He's pretty phenomenal. You gotta have Tim Um Lisa McLean, she is just kind yeah. of a, a, a dynamo in a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think of, um, you know, th those are kind of the best ones I know that most usually if people are, are super solid and rock stars. Normally they're, they're pretty well known mm -hmm. for it because it's just rare to have that. Yeah. Can we, you know, I'll try and keep it as academic as we can, but the story about the sex, sex parties and everything, I mean, this story comes out. Everybody is mocking you for having brought it up. But then, of course, we get this viral, disgusting video out of the, one of the Senate, Senate offices. Of I don't even want to say that was what, the Dems. The, the Republicans don't do that. For sure. For sure. But I'm, I'm curious. That. Yeah. You know, without getting too, I guess, just silly with it. Like, what, what's the degree of like corruption when it comes to people are doing illicit drugs? They're having parties where they're like the debauchery. What's that? And, and anybody feel free to jump in. I like, never saw any on? of that. There's like, a personal. lot of alcohol abuse. There's Fair, a lot but, of alcohol abuse. But there, I've never seen drugs. There, or... There's an undertone on Capitol Hill where, first of all, it's very stressful. And so people look for outlets to release. And, um, you know, there's just a mentality there. And I, and I say this, and I think Madison would agree, that's probably the greatest square footage of spiritual warfare in the entire nation. Um, and maybe the world. So yeah, probably yeah, the world. So people look for for vices and other ways to try to get off energy, frankly. And uh, it's not good. And the, Ever, the whole culture. When, when when that story broke of those two guys, I'm just gonna say, it, I just it's disgusting. But they were they were filming gay porn sex in in the Senate, in one of the rooms. Everyone said Madison was right. No, yeah, we Madison tweeted 
I told you. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I don't, I guess Madison. Hey, and it, yeah. You know, I'll tell you, it, it, again, I think it all just comes back down to uh, spiritual warfare. Like what, just what Luke was saying. I mean, that's something I believe in more than, you know, the physical world. It's just, you know, that there is a, a conflict going on up there. And um, I think that attacking people's, you know, just sinful nature is exactly the best way to be able to sideline some of our best warriors. What are you doing now? I mean, they the machine rages against you, and uh, what's next? They're still terrified of him. Yeah. Well, I live down in Naples, Florida, so I do love where I live. Uh, I can't beat that. I can't represent myself. I was going to let Byron do it, uh, so I love it here. But I do commercial real estate, and then just, you know, I'm still involved in politics where I can be and enjoy it a lot. Right on. We're going to keep it involved. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Sorry to put you on the spot, but I always know that you're ready to go. No problem. You guys have a good one. Talk to you all later. Thanks all right. for calling in, man. I swear I never saw any of that stuff. Like, never even hinted at any of that stuff. There would be stuff, like, that went on, people buying people drinks and going out with members or whatever, but, like, it wasn't, there There was none of that, what you saw in, that, on, be, in the Senate, I mean, in the committee. It's because, it's because you're a Republican. The Republicans are a bunch of squares. You know, I mean, look. I mean, I did work for religious member. Like, mm -hmm. I, I worked, my last one was a very religious member. And that, that like, he still opens the car door for his wife every time he gets in it. Like, every and, single and, time. And uh, how bad could it be? I mean, here's a guy who's probably very much Ned Flandersy, And he's like, don't let anybody know. And he pulls a chocolate, cho chocolate covered cherry out. And he's like, he eats it before lunch. I mean, all my bosses like to drink. All of them. Like, they, they definitely liked to drink. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I, but even with staff, I, I, maybe I just wasn't cool enough. I don't know. But, like, that wasn't a, I, I didn't see any of that. I, it's it's all in the Democrats. And I was there for a very long time. I mean, look, look, look. I think it's fair to say. Well, uh, let me ask you guys first. You guys, you're working for Republicans. Did you see any stuff like this? I I don't go to anything. He I doesn't. don't even drink. He doesn't. But did you even hear about weird stuff? Well, look, there there were just situations where you would you would know that people would go into these parties or or whatever situation and it wasn't even on capitol hill so you couldn't say that it was like concentrated but sometimes the hookup culture there just becomes too crazy and that's a mentality on the hill and so i can't like point to specific instances because i was not ever privy to any of that stuff but when madison said that it was like yeah the hill sucks and the it's the washington dc is the loneliest city in the United States, consistently ranked. And when you have that, people try to meet, but the only way they know to meet is to use alcohol and hook up. And when you have these and gatherings or whatever, then you could just very easily- They also easily, have huge egos too. So like yeah. you have competing egos, right? Lon loneliness, your burnout, you're working all the time. You're trying to get like a quick dopamine You still hit. want to I go to Congress? That, but yeah. Well, my, my point was, no, 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 no. You, you misunderstand. Lie. You misunderstand, right? No, I, I know what you're saying. To I want, up, just to I, go I want to carry in two gallons of spoiled milk mm -hmm. right to the middle and just dump it all on the floor and be like, do something about it. Well, that, <laughs> I will take that's your That's an expulsion. insurrection. I don't care. Yeah, that's you're you're charged for that. <laughs> Insurrectionist. <laughs> I'm just but saying there's a lot of fun stuff like a wholesome stuff that happened. We would have hall parties and my boss would come in and take the grill and he would like cook Texas barbecue out of the bathroom on a on an electric grill and the yeah. Capitol Police would come because the it, hallways were smoked. I mean, there was fun when we were to do. We were at uh Bobert's office. I think we were where we did the show from Lauren Bobert's office. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's uh, whenever I woke up. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh uh you could open the window and there yeah, like went out on the right. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. You could go out onto the people roof and walk around. Walk, and, like in people Capitol, used to, used to go out and smoke. Uh, who was it? The and smoke cigarettes. Balding but. Freedom. Uh, Louis Gohmert He's would have He's barbecue and take a grill out there yeah. and barbecue ribs and like literally it was that's one of those things. Do. He got a reputation. Whenever they people found out Louis was doing ribs, literally members would be like, and they would just bounce. So like I don't care if they're Democrats in too. Uh, no. You see. Because I'll tell you I what happens. I think they can hobnob with, with Louis Gohmert. And I want to call the Texas delegation. <laughs> yeah. by, be, but this, the, these are anomalies that we're talking about predominantly. But there is a culture on Capitol Hill of stress and, frankly, depression and loneliness. And it can suck you in. And if it's there for too long, if you don't have a foundation, then you are going to fold. Can I? I, I would love to vote for a candidate whose whole campaign was, if you vote for me, I will likely be expelled in the first week because I'm going to insult each and every one of these people to their faces. I will be I disruptive as possible. I'd be like, <laughs> I will vote for you. I will. I will. I, mean, I think that's close. MTG was just shy of that, right? MTG. 
Yeah, it was just shy of that. Yeah. And 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 I think she's the above board version of what I'm saying, where it's like she'll be disruptive, but she's gonna she's gonna get do, she's gonna do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can respect that. From yeah. my experience, though, as a staffer, uh, the members that I like were, was not like kissing their butt, like "Hello, sir, how are you today?" Mm -hmm. Right? Like, "Damn you, sir!" I walked up to him at Trump Hotel. I'm like, "I hear you're terrible to your staff." Right? They they wound up having more respect for me. Like that's how I was like friendlier with more members than staff. Like they they kind of appreciated after getting mm -hmm. like their butts but kissed all the time. I feel like you can go up and do that. I mean, my first interaction with Gates was the same thing. Like, what's up with your lead shot, you know? But like, years ago. Mm -hmm. But but still, I, I don't know. I feel like... Mm -hmm. So I think, it, here's an interesting be, you thing. You can be like that and to, be fine. To that point of like, they're getting their butts kiss, kissed all the time. So my first member was Jody Heiss, super wholesome guy, never drank, just amazing. Good man. An, an amazing individual. Um, but one of the things that, um, he, w one of his crowning achievements in Congress was that he never changed. And that's very hard to do. Yeah. And I have two stories of that, but the one I want to tell right now is he, um, I asked him one time, we were like four years into him being up there. I was his campaign manager when he ran. So very close to him all the way. And I was like, so how are you like not changing? Like, how have you managed this? And he goes, Ben, it's really hard because every meeting of every day, People tell you it is an honor to meet you. It is an honor to shake mm -hmm. your hand. May I please have a picture with you? A month of that goes by. Oh, this is what's Congress. Two months goes by. A year goes by. Two years go by. They all say you're a big deal. You start to say, they're right. I am a big deal. And that's why it's because everyone is telling you that every minute of every day. He said, so I just have to tell myself every day, they're not saying it to me. They're saying it to the pen. They're saying it to the office. And as soon as I go, no one will care. You know the, the 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 scary reality is often they're saying it to the media. They're 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 saying you're a big deal based on what other people have said and reported on who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. So that's true. There's not or they're just saying it because they want something. They're exactly. flopping them up. They're and pride up. goes before a fall. You yeah. were told that often enough, then you start mm -hmm. to think it's been said that you are somebody, and in reality, you are not. And then the pressures that come with that, you're pulled in all sorts of different directions. You're in an environment that you're unfamiliar with. You're seeking guidance. The right people aren't there to shepherd you along. It's a pay-to-play scheme with such a fine line like we were just talking about. And it's stressful. It's anxious. It's just a very you know oppressive environment sometimes. And People fold and they change. I mean, how many members have you heard talk about term limits in a campaign when they were running their freshman and even sophomore year that just don't talk about it now? And even members that have basically just burned their bridge to go lobby, what do they do after they leave Congress? They can't, they just go back to back home and that's really difficult to do. I think there's only one thing that proves you've made it and it's that you can survive on your own. Nothing else matters. The idea that you're uh, a big shot who owns a company, I got to tell you, man, if, if, it hits the fan, your piece of paper declaring ownership is meaningless, absolutely meaningless. So you can be in Congress, you can be on TV and you can talk about like, wow, look how wealthy and successful I am. And it's like, sure, you know, what you're doing works well with other people contributing to what you do basically, right? For a show like this, the only reason that I'm successful and able to complain on camera for lots of money is because there are people who contribute to it, but this will do nothing in the real world. It exists today in our golden age bubble of the United States. But how valuable is complaining about things going to be if we enter World War III? They're going to be like, what skills do you have? It's like, well, I'm really good at complaining about stuff. They'll be like, uh-uh, start hammering. You're making metal now for us. There's, there's nothing there. If you can sustain yourself and you can survive on your own, and that's the only thing you have and no one knows who you are, that's what I feel is that's success. That's when you're a big shot. Because you could say to anybody at any time, screw you, you are meaningless to me. You're like, if a person comes up to you and says, let's say you're in Congress and they keep saying, you're the best, you're the best in the world. What, what do you think happens if you disagree with those people? Well, you're in trouble now. Mm -hmm. The people who are paying your bills all of a sudden are, are upset with you and, then you. and then what do you have? But if you know that you can sustain yourself, you can survive on your own in whatever way, way that means, then you truly have the F you money reality of someone comes up to you and says, oh, you're so good. Now- pass this bill for me, you can laugh and say, no, because it doesn't matter. My principles matter. And I know no matter what happens, I'm going to be able to survive on my own. And it's, it's why DC, we're doing what we're doing now. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And in DC, that's called courage. And I'll go on a whole rant that I don't need to do right now. But let me tell you, uh, what the reason DC is broken, the reason the house is broken is not because there aren't enough smart people. 
There are PhDs and doctorate degrees galore. It's, well. So, so I'm saying like educated. We'll call yeah. it educated, not smart. There so you there's, go. There's <laughs> educated people galore, right? There are people with money right around. So it's not like there's money. It's not that it's education. What there aren't is a lot of people with courage who will say what you just said. No, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to go my own way. Those people are rare. And so to people out there who are thinking about, uh, you know, who are they going to vote for in an upcoming primary or something like that? One of the things you need to try to decipher is which of these two people it has the ability or the wherewithal to say, I'm going to do Let me, this. Like, I, I but don't. But courage has to last. So I, there are people that go in and for the first five six seven eight years I'll they take have that courage. courage i'll take they have courage it. and then and then they get beat down and beat down and shunned and people mm -hmm. don't want to co-sponsor their bills and they're not raising money and they're getting basically laughed at mm -hmm. um look, then look. they eventually give in so we get rel very often i bring this up people say to me all the time and actually you know lisa you can you can you can uh give some insight on this Tim, you will never be able to book insert person because you're insulting him or his friends or people around them. And I'm like, don't or care. Your, or your staff is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or your staff is. Like, it's funny when people like Cassandra Fairbank, Cassandra McDonald, for instance, is uh, one of my best friends or and me. she does booking for uh, IRL and Lisa does booking for this show. And it's funny when people tweet at me and they're like, you're going to really let your employees say these things or whatever. I'm like, let them. They can say whatever they want. I have no control over that. Yeah. People are to have opinions. That happened to us. That happened to me. He's yeah. for me. Go full Dana yeah. White. I don't control well, what people say. But it's just like, <laughs> if you think I, as the owner of this company, I'm going to scold my staff who have hundreds of thousands of followers and have had those followers well before they worked here at TimCast, like, you don't watch this show at all. Right. But uh, my, my point in, in the big picture is, yeah, you, people will say like, you will not be able to book this person because you just called them a, a, a scumbag. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they're a scumbag, though. You know, yeah. look, they're members of Congress that I will call a scumbag and, and I'll call evil and we'll still invite them on the show. But I know they're not going to come. And what does this mean? I, I think and I, I probably, you know, I'm going to say this anyway, because I, 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 of course, a big fan of Joe Rogan. I consider him a friend. But I think he'll, he's not going to endorse Donald Trump, despite the fact Everyone kind of thinks he's going to vote for Donald Trump. Like, how do you say the things that Joe Rogan says without already having planned you're going to vote for Donald Trump? Yeah. And he's gone as far as saying, well, if it's Trump versus Biden, you know, I, I, I guess I would. He said something like that, but he's not going to come out and said voting for Trump is the right move. And I think the obvious reason is, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, I think this is a business reality. When you're looking at your business, who you employ, the people who, you, you, who are, uh, you're responsible to, mm -hmm. you're thinking... If I insult these people and actually say and go hard, that's going to reduce my audience size. That's going to reduce the company income. I'll put it this way, because I can't speak to Joe. I think Joe does what Joe does. But I know for a fact that if we tried, like, it, play media ball, it, like in, in much the same way Congress does it, if I said, no, no, I better not insult Adam Schiff because we're going to try and get him on the show. W one thing we don't do is we don't pay guests ever. And there are a lot of really big podcasts that do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... We bring people on who have something to say that are relevant and, and they and they want to come on the show, but we won't offer them money. We've had people demand money from us. Like we saw recently, remember um, Tucker Carlson? This is just recently. Tucker Carlson wanted yeah, to- uh, Yeah, uh, Boris Johnson. And Boris Johnson said, pay me a bunch of money. Million dollars. And he said, not going to do it. But you want to play ball? You want to be the big shot on, on TV with the biggest guests? You can't insult people who are bad because mm -hmm. then you won't get them. So when people like Adam Schiff lie to the American public, you've got people behind you saying- well, I, I know he's bad, but just go easy on the criticism so he can try and book more Democrats. Because if you insult him, then you might not be able to get these people and these people. I'm like, fuck them. Mm -hmm. If we can't get him, we can't get him. All right, calm down, Elon. Yeah, but this is this, this, is, this, is, the, this, is, the, this is the point. It's in, in all areas of business. If you're willing to give a little bit to the bad people, you will gain power from mm -hmm. those around them. But that means you have to entertain the evil. Mm -hmm. that's that's that happens on a minimal level in twitter spaces they're like oh george santos is coming in our thing lisa don't call him out on his lies like that literally happened and he's like, like i mean he's like i'm never going to be in a space with lisa ever again that's why we're he, doing for real though yeah he, he refused to be in a space with me because i was like you're like Wait, george santos yes well i, I gotta tell you look I, i'm sure he would come on like i could dm him and be like come on the show and he would like no, he would, I, he would my, put that aside for my, me but like my my attitude is people who don't want to come on the show don't have to, they don't owe me favors. But I also think there's something very obvious with, uh, we were talking to um, 
I think it was Jameson Ellis who ran against Crenshaw. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This was not correct. It was uh, Dave Smith. Dave Smith was telling a story on, on air or something. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but I was like, Dan Crenshaw will never sit down with Dave Smith. Why? Because Dan Crenshaw knows he's full of shit. People who truly believe their shit want, want to say these things. And they come on the shows and they'll say something like, you know, when we had Hunter Avalon on the show a couple years ago, and I said, Joe Biden said to the prosecutor, if you don't, mm -hmm. if you don't uh, fire the prosecutor, I'm sorry, he said to the president of Ukraine, I think it was Poroshenko at the time, if you don't fire the prosecutor, you're not getting the billion dollars. And Hunter Avalon said, no, he didn't. And he smiled. Here's a guy who truly believes his shit. And right. so when we invite him on, he's like, absolutely. And then right. when he goes, whoops, for someone like Dan Crenshaw, he knows he's full of shit and that he can't defend it. In a, in a raw two-hour conversation. So what happened? We invited him on the show. His staff were like, oh, absolutely, yes. At the last minute, sorry, we can't come. A vote came up. And we said, no problem. Let us know if you're ever well, Another time. Never time, never we, come we, And then they they said, yeah, yeah, we'll reschedule and we'll let you know maybe maybe in a week. A couple of days later, we emailed back. Dead silence. Because Crenshaw is a smart guy. He knows he's full of shit. He knows that we would, we would uh, uh, I've defended him in many instances when the left was unfair mm -hmm. to him. And if he came on the show and talked about anything I want to talk about, we would not shit talk him or insult him. We would just pull up the news stories. Mm -hmm. And then when he says something and we pull up a news story, I'm like, that's actually not true. It's, uh-oh, there's nothing he can say then. He would he would be forced to admit when he's campaigning or when he's, when he's on the floor, he's lying to people. Mm -hmm. And there have been many instances where he's supported a bill and then lied about it or been accused of lying about it later on. I think you mentioned gun control. And then everyone's like, hey, wait a minute. He's listed as voting for us. And he makes a video where he's like, I'm against it. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Well, that was what happened with George Santos. He was talking about how he wasn't pressured to vote for, I think it was a continuing resolution, right? It was something he was like, he wasn't pressured and nobody talked to him and he's his own man. And like, and, and he said something, I don't support it, but I voted for it. So like be a good team player. And I was like, you're, you're parroting like leadership talking points right now and this is how it works and he goes that's not how it works and he goes well lisa's been there for 12 years i've only been here for one but then he wouldn't he refused to come in this was again. when he was in congress this was when was he it was it early on <laughs> this was like uh two months before he got kicked out oh. two three months before he got kicked so out. he's got nothing to lose now either so yeah. like the people well, now he's on all the time the people like Twitter madison every night. you know the people who right. have been forced out of congress and basically like there's there's no political capital left in washington dc necessarily they can say whatever they want to and I, and the whole thing with madison and some of these other members too i thought do they really want to push him out and squeeze him for everything that he's going to say because after a certain point you are not defensive anymore you were just like fine i'm going to go on the offensive i'm going to say whatever the heck i want i'm going to be able to go out there and be my own free man and be my own free agent and you know to a certain extent i saw how the system could rage against madison and frankly the system could range against matt gates and other people and so i thought you know i want to create this business where we have autonomy that if every client fires me tomorrow I'm still the CEO of that company and I have the infrastructure necessary to, to move forward without anybody else necessarily that I don't want to work with. And once you get to that point, you have that sense of freedom and you can move and operate in that town far more easy. Yeah. It's important. I'll give you another story. You were just talking about that sense of playing ball with the media and what you have to sell to do that. And we've talked about what that was in DC. So here's a story that I don't think has ever been told. I don't have the name of the individual, but this is a cool, this is a, this is a very, I think, a revealing story about DC. So Jody Heiss, founder of the Freedom Caucus, my first boss. So he works real hard to get on House Armed Services, a, a committee, and pays all these dues and does a whole campaign and meets with all the right people. And after, I think, two terms, finally gets on. It's a real big deal. He gets on House Armed, House Armed Services and then votes against some real swampy funding for the military-industrial complex. And of course... Uh, especially on house armed services, the lobbying, which is the military generals and contractors and the committee said that it's all one cohort. Like there almost is no separation. It's all intermingled. And so he does a couple of votes that he was told not to do and he gets kicked off the committee. And so it was totally an unfair kickoff, whatever he gets kicked off the committee. Well, he's uh, been on uh, oversight since he gets there and he becomes the highest ranking member on oversight whenever Meadows leaves. So he's running for chairman against who is now the chairman, James Comer. So he's running for chairman. He puts together this huge packet, sorry, of all the things he's going to do and works really hard, goes to the steering committee that we talked about earlier and shows it all to the steering committee. 
um, he loses that election, obviously, to James Comer. And an individual, a very high individual ranking in the steering committee called him to his office. And Jody come, goes into the office and, uh, and that individual says, hey, man, I just want to let you know. And this is before the vote had come back. He said, I want you to know, uh, there's no chance you get this position. You're not getting it. But I want you to know that everything that you talked about that you've done is what I said I was going to do when I ran. And I decided to play ball. And I never got to do those things. And the guy started choking up and crying in front of him. Whoa. Aww. And was like, just so you know, you're not going to get this. But what you did is what I said I would do. And I always kind of have regret that I never did that. Aww. And for Jody at the time, he was like, he wouldn't tell me who that individual was. But he was like, Ben, that was one of the most impactful conversations I ever had. Because I didn't get that position. But I did what I actually said I was going to do. And that's the penalty for it. And that's okay. But... You know, that that is a powerful conversation. He's a good guy. But that that to your example, not playing ball, that's kind of what it can look like on the hill. You know what's interesting? If you go to Congress wait, no, GovTrack. If you go to GovTrack and look up the members' ideology scores, mm -hmm. if really? you look at their ideology scores as compared to how much money they fundraise and see kind of where <laughs> they are there, it's a it's a very interesting um metric to like look at We gotta get you some good ones. If you have have you had Tim Burchard on? Is that no. the ideology score oh. one? Just pick a member, right? Just pick anyone. Uh, Gomert. Okay, yeah, go to Gomert. Oh, right? he's gonna be way out there. Yeah, yeah. No, he's actually not. He's actually not. It's it's a uh, Weber and Banks. I were Burgess. Where is? I forget. Who not it is. Banks. Not it, Banks. No. I don't. I don't think it's here. I mean, does it say? I, there's one where when you go on there, go to ID. Like, do you're talking about the big graph with all the dots, dots right? Yes, yeah, the yes. Dots. If you go on that and then compare, it should be there. Ideology score. Yeah, that's right. Just pick a member. Well, no, no. So okay. I went to ideology score. Okay, so yes, yeah, so but it's not actually showing anything. Yeah, yeah. It. If you pick a member, then you have to like scroll around. And see. Can't hear it. Can't you, you gotta grab the mic. I oh. think the score was next to their names. Yeah, there you go. Go to and you Right, right, right. There's a score. But you gotta click on it because you'll see a map. No, 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 no. It doesn't show you the map when you click on it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's, so, there's another link though, I promise. It is a really cool so it's this whole graph of dots and you hover over it and then it'll pull up the person. Maybe just, if I just do this. put in like rep Weber. Just yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, that, that's it. it. No. No. Just it, if, if you, you go back, Google, it's that it's that third one to the right at the top. This? Yeah, that. Yeah, but this is an image from x.com. Okay, well, so if you go into if you go into GovTrack, right, and put in just Google right now, Rep Weber ideology score. It'll go right to him. I'm I'm going to use him for example because yeah, he comes to, to my mind. Just as a right. channel through. Okay, and then so it should right. Yeah, there's no yeah, Oh, here we go. Down. Here you go. So that's an interactive map to see where they are based on their I think it's their bills all right, all right. introduced. Who do you think is the most far left? On the ideology score, uh, and the Republicans, no, the the, far left, Democrat. Uh, so there's there's Jay there's one. Paul, I'd say Jaya Paul, Norton or Presley. Norton. These are these all. Oh, never heard of it. See, this, <laughs> is, this is exactly what I'm saying. So the people that are on Eleanor, the Eleanor Holmes, Norton Holmes, D.C. Yeah. The people that are on the outskirts, you never really hear of because they're not playing ball. They're not in the mix. And they're Weber, not, Weber, Weber is the furthest right. I know. He's the best. <laughs> That's why he's I work for him. This whole thing was set up. You set this whole <laughs> But no, but my point is, it, and but if you go and look at their fundraising. Let's get those top five Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Right. right in the middle, there's a Democrat and Republican who overlap with each other. Who do you think it is? Uh, where's the middle? Right, right there. So, there. So right here. Okay, here we go. Uh, I don't want to put the mouse over just yet, but yeah. you can see the two that are well, overlapping. Who's, who's the most conservative Democrat? Do we think? And the, and those two are kind of very close. There's to one other. at the top up there. All right, most conservative Democrat. And that's Gotten also Hammer. leadership. That shows where they are in leadership. All right, so right. look, see these two that are overlapping, the yeah. red and the blue one, right, yeah. in the, right to the left of the middle. Who do you think Republican Democrat? Give me overlap? who's the guy? Who's the guy who's retiring right now? The uh, has nothing to lose. Uh, the 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 no the foreign foreign affairs guy, on the Democrat side. No Republican. Um, I have no. Bershwitz is looking at it. Oh, I'm just Gallagher. Gonna, I'm, I'm just Gallagher. Gonna, right, give me Gallagher. Gallagher. Collins. Collins and Quayar. Quayar. So Quayar is Are because... The, the I, literally exactly said Quayar. I knew it was going to be Quayar. His, 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 uh, he's chief in a toss-up. His chief of staff, they call him GOP Jake. <laughs> Davis <laughs> is also his second right, uh, most right-leaning, and he overlaps with Mills. Wow, really? Corey Mills. You yeah, I know. That's, Mills? Yeah, that's wow. that's really interesting. I'm telling you, you got to look at this, and what, everybody what, better pay attention. But what when does you're even mean? Your what, what does it even mean? Ideology score. So it's like the bills that you co-sponsored, the bills that you didn't like say yes to, right? And I and I think it's the it, legislation introduced too. Can we get like the top five of the right? Like start over to the right. And just run so uh, Weber, Weber, 
Uh, Norman, Norman huh. Babin. Babin. Oh, Norman is the Les nicest Norman. person on That's Capitol Hill. Norman is the nicest person on Capitol Hill. Yeah. Miller. So, Babin's yeah. nice, too. Miller's base. Gosar. Oh, yeah. Jackson. Those are rookie Amalfa. numbers for Gosar. Those are rookie numbers. Far, for their over. Whatever. I'm surprised Gosar, Gosar isn't all the way on the left at Gosar. this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he has you have to open up bit. another tab for Gosar. All right. Uh, Molinaro is the left, most leftist Republican. I've... I would, I would have put um, Molinaro. It's kind of crazy that there's a Republican that's more left leaning than Democrats. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Look where he's he, from. Didn't he New lead, York. Didn't he lead the charge, yeah. or was one of the person that led the charge against Santos? I think he was one of the probably. Yeah, he's New York. The whole New York delegation. Who, makes sense. Did, did we notice that George Santos announced that he's running for New York's first last night? Yep. Oh, did he really? He announced mm-hmm. for Congress during the State of the Union that he's running for New York's first, and I believe it's uh, is it Lawler that he's running against? Maybe, maybe not. There's Ocasio Cortez. Pretty far left, you yeah. can tell. Mm-hmm. Mm. Huh. It's a fun map, though. But what is the up and down spectrum? leadership? I think right? it's leadership. Oh, okay. Right, I see. I see. I see. Right, leadership. Oh, score. okay. So who's the furthest bottom right? Who's that one? Miller. Miller. Okay. They're newbies. She's so Mary, she is solid. She yeah. is a wonderful, yeah, she's wonderful so person. All right. And she likes my on. clothes. She oh, always that's good news. I, I've got two good friends actually that work for her now. She's, she's really director. sweet. Shakowski. Furthest yeah. left. Wow. Highest leadership. That's interesting. Yeah, these are people you don't hear, but they're probably chairing a committee yeah. or a, 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 yeah. pow, a more pow, powerful committee, but you don't know who they are. If they're quiet and they play ball and they follow the, Got the leadership. Shaker. You know, it's really funny is but how, many, how, how many members of Congress can the average person name? And it's probably like zero. It's probably like five. They can't name their no, own representative. No, no, the average person. The average person. Oh, the, yeah, none. How many, how many members of Congress can the average politico name? Like five. Five to ten, maybe? Yeah. What could, I wanted to show, oh, sorry. Could what we name our state rep? Do all of us know who our state no, rep is? Mine are all is. Democrats. I live in Philadelphia, so there's not even worth looking at them. But um, if you look at this, so see how their leadership, the fur, they're further left, they're all at the top, and ours is like, Yep. Down lower. Do you, do you see the difference? Like the mm. hours are more. Well, who's the most in the leader? Center. McCall is the most leadery of the Republicans. Oh, <laughs> what does that sound? All oh, right. <laughs> but um, I really, I really want to make my friend, chief. Is, my friend is his chief. I really want to make Call a him Republicans up. day worse. Put him on the phone. So <laughs> Scott Franklin, mm-hmm. why did you vote to expel George Santos? And you're from Florida. I hate him. I would have, exp- I would have expelled him too. I'm sorry. I Scott Franklin. Him. Santos, I would have gotten rid of him in a heartbeat. I know, and it's personal, I guess, because I just don't like him. So, so Frank, I just think that, did Franklin, he primaried. It's um, a bad look. I have a Scott Franklin story. Well, he primaried. So Gates and like the sheriff in that county got him elected. They primaried somebody uh, who who did something that like pissed him off. And I can't remember what it was, but between Gates and I think it was, um, it was the sheriff down in one of the Pinellas County or something like that in Florida. And between the two of them, they knocked somebody off that I think voted against something that Trump wanted. Hmm. So uh, essentially he was, he was primaried from the right yeah. and, and placed there. And I haven't heard a word from him since he got in. All right. So here's my Scott Franklin story. So do you remember when they tried to do, the um border checks was it the four hundred fifty thousand dollar border checks is that what they did um hang on i have to so ooh, oh man i'm you weren't ready for the story yeah, you, you had all that time <laughs> too. this is the second, uh, give me a second. <laughs> so it's basically we led a press conference that was like we led this initiative that was signed by a ton of people. Then we led a press conference that has the speaker and the or had McCarthy and had Scalise. It was like a real big deal. And basically, we kind of overtook this issue, right? So we were like leading on the issue. Well, Scott Franklin had done like a resolution or something in his office. Well, he wasn't invited to the press conference. So his staff called up and berated me for yelling at me for not inviting him to the press conference. And I was like, I'll be honest, I didn't even know you like y'all were in this, like whatever. So as my way to have a little fun with it, we made a video. If you go to Bobert's Twitter, we made a video and um, maybe search CDC. It's where they're carrying a casket and people have floating heads. Um, <laughs> and I, how put, did I miss this? What was this? You'll see. It's, it's, I, w- I would need it, like, what was, what were the words? So I would in search the tweet. CDC. Yeah, did nothing. It's no. too vague. Well, She's got you, way too many tweets pertaining to that. Well, if you go to the actual Twitter and then search it's on recently, no, but if you search CDC and do or do media, right? Can you not do that? 
Here, I'll see no. if I can find it. All right, yeah, that's no. fine. But anyways, I'm searching Google for... If I find it, I'll we'll yeah. pull it up. But I threw his head in the very, very back of the video <laughs> is like a tiny little spot cameo to be like, you're included. And I sent it to his staff and the video got you know, a million, two million views, something like that. And I was like, I was wondering how they would take it. And they were like, we loved it. Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> let me, let me, let me ask you guys about Jeff Van Drew. Democrat from New Jersey second switches parties, meets with Trump. That's my mom's district. How does that happen? Is it, is it Jeff Van Drew okay, so that, sitting there with a tear in his eye saying, what has become of my party? I'm a Republican. Or is it someone going to him and being like, you will not so, win? He was going to lose. No, well, he yeah, was going to lose. Well, Van Drew was always kind of like a moderate Democrat anyway. It's my mom's district, so I know, right? So he was a moderate Democrat anyway. The whole place, like if you go to Cape May, New Jersey, down there, the whole harbor is filled with Trump flags on the boats. It is, right. My, like Wildwood Crest, Cape May County, all of that. It's super that way and and he decided that the left had gone too far which a lot of regular democrats felt like that so he's like i'll be a moderate republican stick with these maga people and and go from there he's not that bad to be honest he's not that bad well he but voted he was he, gonna lose he voted yes to expel george santos I he falls in line with leadership because leader I, I guarantee you i know what happened he recognized he was going to lose in his leaning republican trending republican district he went to the republican leadership and he said i will flip if you give me air cover from the nrcc and clf and all of these other organizations if you pour money into my district then i will be the greatest asset you have for the rest of the the congressional year and so when he switched parties they made a big messaging deal over it and now that they probably pour a ton of money into his district and his campaign and the alternative was he remained a Democrat and lost by three points. Right. So if you live in New Jersey's second and uh, you are wondering why he voted to expel George Santos, maybe politely give him a call and ask him. Ask him why? Yeah. yeah like why, why would you? Why? I like Andrew. Well, we're just, we're, we're no, just curious. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm done with the pathetic frailty, fragility and the desperation of the Republican Party. Okay. I am, I am, th these are people who are worried more about looking cool in the newspaper than they are of what actually is happening in this country. And there are very few Republicans who are actually like, this is the right thing to do. But like, okay, but here's the deal. I am probably the furthest right person on your staff, probably. I, I would, I would guess that I am the furthest right person here. And I would have vote and i'm further right there yeah, but that's not that's not a principled position you're but saying you don't i would like have him voted personally. i would have voted yeah well yeah but he's he was a cancer for the party i mean uh, he's drag queening it up we're trying to fight drag queen story hour you got pictures of him in dresses with lipstick when? on and he lies all the time like when, when was the drag stuff it was like years but it was it was the year the year he got elected was it the year yeah in brazil i don't know where it was but who cares well, i do because i want to know if he actually did it or not I so want, a, a, I photo, want... a photo emerges accusing him of having done drag in Brazil. And I'm like, that could literally be anyone. It's a person wearing makeup. I can't recognize who that is. He was and also it's... making crappy votes. Go look at his vote thing. Like he's not that the, he wasn't the, as helpful. The issue is, is a man was expelled from Congress without being convicted of a crime. That's fair. Okay. But they also have the right to like seat them or not if they want to, even before. So then why, you aren't, get elected, why aren't Republicans right now with the majority getting rid of Adam Schiff? Republicans had a you, razor you, and they still have a razor thin majority. And, and they, they kicked out one of their own guys. And then McCarthy, and they didn't get rid of Adam Schiff. They could have the Republicans right now well, could vote to expel Schiff. So then go. So then instead of calling and messing with Van Drew, go call leadership and say, hey, Go start ousting people. I want to ask McCarthy. That's, that's I, see, I was told strategy. by Republicans leadership and McCarthy. should remove every single Democrat. Was, Just do it. Come on. I was told by McCarthy that we were all a team, that we all had to play had to play baseball. And then as soon as he loses the speakership battle, he steps down and leaves Congress and gives them an even smaller majority, that's a razor thin care. majority. Because that's exactly it. They, he didn't care. He couldn't walk around the place Republicans anymore being suck. a normal member of Congress. Yes, You've they got, kick out their own. They step down from, from speakership or they get kicked out of the speakership position. And then he just leaves Congress, takes his ball and goes home. So it was never about the team. If if it was I never about the team. if I was leadership speaker and everyone was going, George Santos must be expelled. You know what I would do? I would I would say I would privately be saying to everybody like this is a really important issue. You're right. We're going to move forward on this one. Thank you for bringing my bring it to my attention. Then I would go to the floor and I would say all in favor of expelling Adam Schiff. Come on, baby. You want to expel people? Let's expel Adam Schiff. That guy's lied about basically everything over yeah. and over again. He published the private phone records of an American journalist to win political points. Right. So then let's get, let's start calling. So who to get the, are these people to be like, George Santos lied about stuff? 
Yeah. Okay. He lied about the stupidest things, and I don't. And, and, it, and it's, it's it, he's he's in he's in for one year, and he's 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 an idiot. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Let's have concerns about this. He was convicted of nothing. He was accused of things. Adam Schiff lies to the American people to subvert our elections and win political power. More importantly, the moment Adam Schiff published the private phone records of John Solomon, every single Republican, and at the time they were, oh, I'm so upset. Once they won the majority, the first motion, the first move should have been Adam Schiff is expelled for this violation of, the, of, of American rights. Instead, they sit, they sit on their hands and then George Santos says stupid things and they're like, all in favor of getting rid of our own party member because he's annoying. I, I agree with that. I agree with all that. I think that we should start going after people for listen to this. Just regular sodomy laws. Do you know? No, 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 Go start now. Go start prosecuting people. Go to every woman, because if you know what the real definition of sodomy is, go. Anything other than missionary, basically. There you go. I'm being a little So go to every Republican thing and get and go start prosecuting Democrats in their states. No, 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 no. That's what they're doing to Trump. I'm all for that. I'm fine playing hard, but you also don't want these. I don't think so. How about. They're all still in the books in these states. It's true. But how about you expel Bowman right now? Republican majority, you expelled Santos, and Santos brought this up. They won't expel the guy I agree who with that. pulled the emergency signs off the door, pulled the fire alarm, and lied about it. And he was criminally charged too. There are members. Didn't that he would... plead guilty? Did he plead guilty? Yeah. I'm... Yeah. He, he ended yeah. up pleading. He, he pleaded he guilty, down. and they won't remove this guy. No. And so, the, so no, no I, Republican when, will I, take when it. I say you give Van Drew a call and you ask him why this is happening, you be polite. And you say, I'd like to rec uh, reconcile this problem I'm having where Jamal Bowman broke the law, admitted to it, is on camera doing it, and y'all haven't expelled him. But George Santos, who was accused, has been expelled. Bob Menendez in the Senate still not been expelled after after two very serious accusations. Yeah. And you know what? I am fine with not expelling Menendez right now. Prove it. Prove it. Bowman admitted to doing it, and we watched him do it on camera. And there were, so... I, 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 I spare none of these Republicans. None of them. I will go through this list. And you know what we should do? Okay, but you, know, you know what I'm going to do from now on? How about I pull up a name every single day on Timcast IRL and I say, today's member of Congress is Ann Wagner, <laughs> Republican from Missouri's 2nd District. And you give her a call if you live in this That's district fair. and ask why Jamal Bowman can break the law and you will not expel him. And George Santos was only accused and that warranted removal. By uh, 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 by the way, his seat's now been replaced by a Democrat. That's yeah. fair. That's is fair. it because you are stupid? Evil or both. And make the direct ask, will you today go down to the House floor and introduce a resolution to expel Bowman? Because they could still do it. They could do it today. Go down to the House floor and introduce this. If the House is open, they could they could still move forward with it, but they don't play the but same game. But also call okay. leadership. Call everyone, leadership because... Everyone right now, and always be polite, because you... And, and, and you have to actually live in the district. Find your rep, call them, and politely ask them, please. Some might say to peacefully and patriotically make, make your voices, your voices heard. heard. Yes. <laughs> peacefully and patriotically. Yes. Make your voices heard and call your member of Congress and say, I would like you to introduce uh, in any way possible the expulsion of Bowman for breaking the law and admitting to it. It disrupted Congress. We don't need to play stupid games and say, oh, it's an insurrection. Oh, you know, we, we can joke about that on Twitter. But in reality, it's this is a man who admitted to breaking the law disrupting the official proceedings he should be expelled now the republicans have the majority to do so and should do so and if they give you hem if they hem and haw you ask them and i'm talking about those who specifically voted to expel santos you say but you you, you expelled santos mm -hmm. certainly you could expel someone who literally broke the law and admitted it call speaker johnson's office either way Speaker what, Johnson where, did not vote he, to remove Santos. I don't believe. Right, and 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 uh, where does he represent? Oh, that was the other thing. Louisiana Le leadership, but he could, but he could introduce. Did uh, leadership whip that the vote at all? Get, hmm? Leadership no, did not no, whip that vote. Did, I think so, they actually. So leadership did not them. whip that vote, meaning that it was individually up to these members. Like they didn't get any sort of guidance and direction. It was one hundred percent upon them. There was basically no consequences except for what the constituents thought of Republicans it. Republicans are so pathetic. No. They are, they I agree. Are, with uh, you know what it is? No. <laughs> it's the, the 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 rock stars come on TV and they're like, "I'm a Democrat, so rock on." And then the Republicans are like, "Please think I'm cool." Yeah. yeah. You know what it reminds me of? It's like high school kid who's like the cool, mysterious kid hanging out in the corner of the room, and all the girls like him. And then there's the nerdy kid, and he's like, "I wish I was like him." Yeah. You know who has cars like that? So Massey's one of them. I used to have members say, "Massey says no to everything," and he's the type of guy. And this is a quote that I would like that we would like to shove in a locker like back in high school. <laughs> like that's what they said about him. I, and and the members don't like him. Like they don't like him. And they, that's because he's obstructionary. You know, I think and it's kind of changed know, a little bit. You know yeah, why lately. I like him? 
we've we've had a lot of politicians like come on uh, Timcast IRL, and you can tell which one is a politician. Massey is like Massey and Marjorie Taylor Greene are great because you're like, what do you think about X? And they go, why? There's no waiting. They know what their answer is already. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Someone asked Thomas Massey about ending birthright citizenship. Of course, there's not even a question. He's like, yes. <laughs> it's like, so, okay. So uh, you want to know the gangster move about Massey? Like we've talked about some cool people that's like pretty cool. Here's it. So he does all his own he, comms. What? He does his own Twitter. Yeah, so he does all his own. But no, this is the gangster move. This is whenever you know that they're a gangster. He doesn't keep a war chest. Everybody. Gates. MTG. Everyone keeps a war chest. He doesn't. He sends the money back. And so your money that you have for your campaign, they like to keep their money million, million, five and above. Massey sends it all back to the government to no to the people that gave it to oh, him. Okay. He sends it back. And then when it's time to run an election, then he goes and says, hey, if you'd be willing, you contributed in the past. If you'd be willing to it again, I'd super appreciate it. But he doesn't keep a war chest. I remember hearing a conversation with him and another member about it. And he goes, war chests are a sign of weakness. You're scared you're going to lose. I was like, <laughs> he's, he's a good but You dude. mentioned doing his own comms. Like there are members that also are just terrified to engage with the media whatsoever and they mm -hmm. won't fight. They just take the defensive position of, of the media. And like, I work for people that did not accept that whatsoever. I remember having to call a reporter's mother one time just because I couldn't get the reporter themselves on the phone to actually answer a question. And that th they berated me on social media for it. But, I mean, sometimes you just have to fight. There's one time like with Madison Cawthorn that there was a an NBC reporter that had or a producer that had emailed the on the hill NBC reporter and basically said, hey, we're trying to get Madison uh, Cawthorn's response on this, but we're afraid to email his office directly because he might ask to come on the show because they were from Rachel Maddow. And then that <laughs> that that reporter accidentally cc'd me on that email trying to get me the contact <laughs> and so if you google madison cawthorn rachel maddow right now like it was the front page story of fox news for like 12 hours they had a chiron on there that said msnbc o w a r d msnbc coward and there was there was the fox news article was like the main one and they were highlighting the portions but wow. people are too afraid sometimes to actually engage these no, people would not the hesitate to rip your eyeballs out it's it's, it's just the left yeah I w I, we would have met rachel maddow on any one of our, our shows here in two seconds if she showed up at my door abruptly i would i would and and she said i will do your show tonight but just you and me i'd be like cancel whoever else is coming on rachel mm -hmm. maddow you're sitting down we're having the conversation yeah but you do the, you, you go the other way and they they run away screaming no they're terrified of it and you know we all we asked to go on the show and they would not respond to us we asked publicly to go on the show and they wouldn't take him and i don't know if it was they were afraid to debate they didn't want to give him a platform i don't know but they don't want to have this dialogue and they shut people down whenever they don't actually want to engage in any form of debate we're coming, yep. to, we're coming towards the end real quick. So I want to do a rapid fire. I, I just got questions I want everybody's takes. Let's do it real quick. Y'all, <laughs> VP, Stigman. who's your pick? Tim. I don't have a good answer for that. I don't either. I don't know. I guess like if the, if the Vivek is the first thing I'd have to say. I agree. But I, I don't know that that's the appropriate response because a VP is usually for political points, not like Vivek is, is too top tier mm -hmm. to be in this do nothing backroom position. Mm -hmm. It doesn't so, have to be a do nothing position, though. That's yeah, what it becomes. What do you think of uh, Roger Stone saying Tulsi Gabbard? No. Yeah, VP. I think Tulsi Gabbard is a really, really great. Uh, it is an really intriguing great. position because initially I would say no, and then as I think about it, appealing to the younger generation and to independents and undecided, it's potentially moderate, it's former Democrat, military has a great service. story, military mm -hmm. service on the back. I was for Tulsi in in 2020. I'm still a big fan. I I contributed. I was actually going to mention this because it's really great. When I when I donated to Tulsi's campaign, I got a call from Tulsi's mom. Oh, wow. And, and it was like the funniest thing. I look at my phone, it said Gabbard. And I was like, what? I was like, what is this? And I answered, hello? And it was like, hi, is this Tim Pool? I was like, it is. And it was Tulsi's mom. And she was like, thank you. And and it was really it was really great to have the conversation because uh, I can't speak for Tulsi, but the conversation was generally like what we talk about, what is really happening, what we're concerned about, a fairly moderate conversation. Uh, we want to disagree, but we want to work these things out. And it was like, I was talking about the weird woke stuff, and and I think Tulsi is a moderating force for Democrats. And this is back when Tulsi was a Democrat. Tulsi Gabbard might might yeah. I think I would revise my answer and say Tulsi above Vivek, and it, but it is still coin tossy. And the reason is a VP balances out your ticket. Yeah. V Vivek with Trump is just basically like <laughs> Trump times two. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. And that's why I said I didn't think that it would be him because he needs someone to appeal to the voters. Like with Pence, he needed to appeal to the evangelical voters in the 2016 campaign. But we I, had I, the I, evangelical I think Byron would be strong. 
I, I like Byron, Byron as a. I like Byron Donald in general, but oh, I don't yeah. know about that. He's. I think. I actually think he's under real consideration. Really? I mean, he's awesome. Yeah, he's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I like Byron. Yeah, yeah. I do like Tulsi though. Tulsi. I like to I, she, I, military service, and, and she's currently active, right? She's a, I would go, she she's a yeah. woman. Charged, she's so a, she's of, a woman. No, she's I, a I, I'm so sick of the identity politics things. Like, oh, we need like a, a token person, whatever. She's a woman. Like, that. let's pick a so, woman. So, but not you didn't. Take away like, identity that's... politics of it, though. It does enable you from a political perspective to, to speak on certain things from different perspectives. Not because I'm a woman and you oh, say that. stop. Well, I, don't, I don't care about she's a woman and she's I don't, I don't want women in office. I, I care that Tulsi is a former Democrat who saw that the Democrats were going insane, mm -hmm. moderated her position, has revise some of her positions mm -hmm. and uh, represents former like post liberals. Yeah. So I, I was like Tulsi Gabbard needs to save the Democratic Party when she was running because the Democrats are going insane. You've got corporate monsters and you've got woke psych psychotic behavior. And I disagree with Tulsi on gun control and nuclear power, but she listens and talks to people. She does. So who is RFK but mil Jr. military service is the most important thing. Who is RFK Jr. a threat to right now? If the Biden, general election Biden, were next Biden. week, is it Biden? 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 Yeah. Pulling more from Biden. I think, I think, I, did y'all see RFK Jr.'s video response to this uh, State of the Union last mm -hmm. night? Oh, it's He's too long to play right now, but good? it's like five minutes. It is epic. What, do you have any, what, what, were the, what were the other rapid fire questions? We'll get a couple. Uh, after Trump, who do you want to see kind of taking the helm of the GOP? Oh, oh man, Ron DeSantis. Of course, I'm kidding. But. <laughs> <laughs> not. It's so sad, actually. Uh, man, honestly, I have no idea at this point because Ron was supposed to. Right. And then he just, burned everything so, down. Well, but I will say, I, I, will I say worked this. on that campaign down in Florida and it, I just, I, behind the scenes, I, I saw that and I could tell and he just, you know, he talked like this and yeah. he was like, can we go to Wawa? So, we went to Wawa, we go to Wawa four Wawa? times <laughs> in one day. One time. I was like, I we got a Wawa. I got a hot dog. No. He killed it as a governor. No. You're not going to okay, convince me he didn't kill it as a governor. But, but how about And this? then he killed his campaign. Well, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then once he stopped running, his videos yes. and what he was put out with. What are you doing? Yeah, I know. Like, it's so exactly. good. Right, but he's another one. He's another one that won't come on, right? So we've asked him, yeah. and we've asked his staff members to be on. They're the banned. staff mem members said to me, let me run it up the chain. Uh, uh, guess who had been on before, right? Let me run it up the chain. And they were like, nope, I was told I'm not allowed to do it. So, what? So you know that friends, all of the people- Friends of ours. You know like, that all of the people who are on the Trump campaign right now that have gotten him to where he is were fired by Ron DeSantis. Hold on. Do you know this inside baseball? No, uh, what is this? Oh. Okay, so in 2018, do we have a time limit or, or can we- Yeah, yeah just okay. roll with it. All right, so in 2018, Ron DeSantis was losing badly and they brought on Susie Wiles to manage the campaign and Remember she that won name. it for him. And she knocked it out of the park. She brought on and built the best team that that state had ever seen in a long time. This is a- it's like sixty year old, white haired, older, like late. This is not. A she is one of the sweetest life. people I've ever interacted with, and she's they given fired me her? a ton of opportunities. He fired her because Casey DeSantis. Well, say, well, say what position he gave her first? Oh, uh, gave her. Yeah, so she was his chief of staff in the governor's office for a short period of time. I don't think so. No, I don't, no, it was on the transition side. Oh, on the transition. She, she, was, she was on the transition, transition side, and so um, Casey DeSantis went to the Florida GOP. And realized that there were probably more Susie loyalists than there were DeSantis loyalists, and she didn't like that. Wow. So there was an internal fighting, and she was pushed out. She, they had blamed it on like she was leaking to the media or whatever. And then there were a couple of other staffers that uh, went along with her. But basically, it was like one fell swoop that everyone I'd worked with on the campaign was suddenly out. And they had wanted me to come down and work in Florida. And so not only did he get her fired from the transition team, but he got her fired from her lobbying group, the Ballard Partners in Washington, D.C., got her fired from her position on the Trump reelection campaign in 2020 and single-handedly made sure that she was unemployed. Trump hired her a few months later, and within the span of two years, she and Trump and that whole team had basically completely obliterated Ron DeSantis's career. Well, and you will never hear from her. So, do you remember? Humble, do you remember I, I, when there was like that weird, like, is there something going on between Trump and DeSantis, like early yeah. on, and there was just like whispers? That's whenever all of this was happening. Ron DeSantis has proven he should be nowhere near politics after his his term is up. He ran or did not run. Whatever he did with his campaign was so miserably bad, with no ever with with never an attempt to actually fix the problems that's just it so you know you but that's were, how he is in real life like in two i i well I, then there you go he shouldn't be i was he working be in around him in 2018 i was that's when i was took that middle east foreign policy thing and he was working on some israel stuff and he was unlikable like 
really arrogant, not nice to his staff. I mean, that's how he was. He was very interpersonal. So and who, awkward. Who, who, You're not going to tell me he wasn't a great. So governor. we have uh, Matt Gates, but I don't think he wants to. Yeah. He wants governor of Florida. You th- you think he does though? Yeah, but but when? Like not for a while, I'd imagine. After the chance. Really. I mean, if you miss your moment in politics for advancement, you miss it. Like if that window closes, I think it's gone. You think which Matt, is tough because I think Byron wants it too. So I think to I, I think Matt is at a higher profile than a governorship right now. It, you can't compare the two. It, 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 I yeah. get it. So 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 yeah. Like uh, he has a good profile. He's got a big he, national profile. Yeah, I understand that. He gets paid one hundred eighty thousand dollars, and he has two million dollars for staff. Okay, you become right, right, a right. governor. You have an army. Yeah. Yeah. You have your own army, okay? And you got you, your own car. You got, you, yeah. he has the state of Florida, okay? Yeah. Does he feel like lunch in Miami or Tampa? And then like, instead, and instead of yelling at the be, State of the Union, he is then suddenly being able to, you know, going around and can yeah. start doing the same, some of the same things that Frank I'm for it. For, right. uh, yeah, Matt, Matt Gates for, for governor would be fantastic, but we, we, he's, he's like our best member of Congress. That would suck. Byron Byron's wa- not Byron, ready yet. That's true. That's, yeah, Byron's great. Byron wants it. I know, but he's my, my understanding. Once, once they, they, they publicly the fought, they publicly fought over this like three months ago, mm-hmm. and they, 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 they had labeled well because it wasn't the game. The, the game that we were watching with that battle wasn't the one being played, oh. as Matt would say. And so, whenever there was this like outward friction between Donald's proposing some sort of legislation, I don't even remember what it was re- related to. Gates went on the attack and started like literally labeling Byron's legislation like the Byron Donald's amnesty. It was something I think about immigration <laughs> and. And it was just like this this is not over the bill in Congress right now. It's like anyone outside of Florida that thinks that it is is totally blind. This is obvious jockeying for being All right. the governor of Florida. So uh governor of Florida is what, eight years? Yeah. Two terms Term for each. Mm-hmm. Uh so if Matt Gates takes go, makes that move, so what uh, Ron is uh uh is out of what? It's it's he's still got a couple of years, right? Or no? Uh, he, he, he was sworn in in 2019. So he's His four years, right? He's got, he's two, got four, like three he's on his second years. term. He's, yeah. he's one year into and it's already been term. almost a year. So maybe so like, three, maybe more, three, years, three more years. Three more years. Mm-hmm. So then, uh, Matt, so, I mean, we're not, we're not looking at a potential Matt Gates move for higher office. Even president, like leader of the Republican party is not going to be for like, I think Matt wants to be the years. AG. I love it. I think he wants to be the AG of if Trump, Florida, and then he could potentially be tapped as. If, the, if it, no, if Trump wins, he should appoint Matt Gates the Attorney General of the. He would have to federal. be acting AG because that's confirmed by the Senate. Yeah, and so he would never. Oh. Get <laughs> He'd be acting so AG. He is done. Yeah, that's that would I'm be great. Doing. I told Cash too. We we're talking to Cash Patel, and I was like, we just need a good AG. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, to restore confidence in law enforcement in this country, we just need someone who can actually get it done. Well, so so let's 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 uh, let's hit this one. Uh, who, who do you guys think is, is next in line after Trump? Politics is such a, you know, like so many things change so quickly. Um, I think a rising star is JD Vance. Yeah. JD Vance has done really well. Um, he hasn't done a ton on the policy front, but the sides he comes down on and the way he messages has been good. Well, more pressing and the more frustrating question is who's going to take over as Senate leader. Right. That's yeah. more that's more wow. in front of our faces. And there is and, no way that Trump Jr. throws up his hands and allows that political dynasty to slide into history. I don't see Trump Jr. as following in the footsteps of. of I don't I don't necessarily dad. mean that that is who that he is going to run necessarily. I think that what but whatever happens, like he will be deeply involved in whatever yeah. happens in the next. I, I, I say this a lot, but I feel like uh, Don Jr. is too much of a regular dude. Like he he's he's a down to earth guy who he's. I think he likes being kingmaker, frankly, which I, is why I think he'd be heavily involved. Yeah, I don't I don't see him. You know, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's certainly it's certainly possible, but he seemed yeah maybe kingmaker is a better way to to look at what he would do behind the scenes supporting candidates and things like that. I'll give you somebody who, not now but in the future. So I'm a big. I wish you could buy stock in members. Right, like because we like see. They can. Well, I mean, you can. No, 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 no. I'm saying like <laughs> predict it. Just yeah. follow them. Follow yeah, their yeah, stock trends. I guess, but no, I'm no. I'm saying like you see members where I'm like that member has the juice. One of those members is Dan Bishop. Dan Bishop out of North Carolina. He's running for Attorney General of North Carolina. He he should have been, and this is not a shot at Jim Jordan. He should have been the head of the new Weaponization Committee 
Um, he Dan I, is our friend too. Yeah, well, like so we know him big Dan Bishop. That's the name I was trying to remember downstairs when I said that a member went to Madison and said, "I'll be like your mentor." Oh, that's who I was talking. But we, oh, okay. we, we, we like this guy reads the bills. This and, guy. Yeah, and that's He's got a great son. And that is great, but cool. being president and being leader of a party is is something else. Donald Trump wasn't in politics. Right. He's just like Trump walks in the room, mm -hmm. and it's almost like there is an energy coming off him, forcing you back. It's so powerful. Like you he just this, this guy. Exudes. It's a different level. I don't think yeah. it is anybody that we can name in this room right now. I know it's tough. Yeah, but I, I, Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's what, been in this room. Which chair was the yeah, right. Kanye seat? I actually That's wanted to know. Oh, dang it. See, I <laughs> oh, crap. It, everything changes so quickly. If you remember, like, right before Trump announced and all that, it was like Rand Paul was getting the cover of Time and people were, like, rallying behind him a little bit. There was, a, like, a and quick Santorum moment. And Santorum was legit then? Why right? did like... <laughs> it, this yeah. was, like, a while ago. And then Trump came and, like, sucked all wait, wait, the life out of the room. I got so it. Things can I was at Santorum's shift. house hold, hold on. months ago. How, how, tall, how tall is Thomas Massey? Shorter than me. I'm 5'11". Yeah, he's probably like 5'10". 5'10". Okay, it's not bad. You know, typically presidents are getting taller and taller, mm -hmm. but can we get Thomas Massey to go on like a CrossFit routine? Just get like super ripped? Hold and on, get hold like a on. Hollywood pause, 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 pause. Uh, everyone, Thomas Massey, why is he not running to replace that Senate seat in Kentucky? Thomas Massey in the U.S. Senate? Yes, please. Well, what I'm saying is, Let's get like Hollywood level, um, like makeup and fashion. We'll get we'll get a Hollywood Swag trainer. Him out. Just three weeks of hardcore. Just get him insanely ripped, and then have him run, and just you know what I mean. Just like let's let's give him the Hollywood treatment to maximize all of the personal. Have so, him have him have him do the like full Rocky routine. You're saying the full run Rocky in, routine, okay. but then nice also like uh, uh, audit the Fed. <laughs> and yeah, just like let's make him. This is the guy who should be president, but he's not going to want to be, and that's kind of why I want him to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we we, we just got to put the full Hollywood treatment behind him, get him super ripped. Maybe uh, maybe he can wear those high heels that Ron DeSantis wore. But the thing is, you're going to get the makeup on him, and you're going to get him all ready, and he's going to be ripped, and we're going to get him ready for the debate, and it's all looking good. And then he comes out, and he's got this big ugly debt counter clock on his <laughs> yeah, five thousand dollars suit, and you're like, "No, sir, we had a look going." He's like, "It counts the debt." <laughs> I got one of those right he's gonna here. Have to get some more yeah. 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 He's going to have to get some more digits on that That's thing. That's awesome. He was yeah. wearing it last Did you night. ask him about, did he tell you about his um, app-controlled solar-powered chicken feeder? Of course. Oh, he's so the proud of it. The Klux Capacitor. Klux Capacitor 3000. It's not, it's not, it's not a feeder. It's a, It moves slowly in the grass, so the chickens in the coop always have fresh grass. Oh, that's what you oh, were yeah, telling me about And that. he says, and it leaves a trail of chicken poop, which makes the grass super Grow fertile. Oh. And, uh, yeah, it's You crazy. need to watch uh, The Swamp on HBO, that documentary, because yeah. they go to his house and they show how his whole house is run off the Tesla battery yeah. and it's off the grid and things like that. It's just, He's, it's really good. And the thing is, he doesn't want power. And, no. and that, that's, 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 you know, we have to, we have to pressure him really, really, we had to peer pressure him for higher office. I would love for him to do so. So he almost ran for governor. So wow. what happened was they were redistricting in Kentucky and they almost redistricted him to him into like a city with like a, basically made his district yeah. like a toss up district. And I think it was Raleigh. I think he go or not Raleigh. What's the capital of Kentucky? Louisville. Louisville. Is it Louisville? No, yeah. no, no, it's not Louisville. Louisville's the biggest city, but it's not the capital. Anyways, they were going to draw the capital into his district, making it extremely blue. And is that right? Yeah. And I, I was going to say Frankfurt. Frankfurt but that so they were going to draw right. Frankfurt into his district. So he goes, look. If I'm going to represent the Capitol, it's going to be as governor. So basically, if you do this, I'll just run for governor. <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 no. And they drew him back out. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, we're, we're, a, yeah, little bit, we're, we're a little bit over. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to make any good predictions. But uh, do you guys want to final thoughts, wrap up, shut anything up before we go? We need good people working uh, in the swamp, even if it does suck sometimes. But get a good foundation before you get up there, a church, a mentor base or something like that. Because if you're just left by yourself, you are going to fall, falter and fail. And you won't work for the American people like you should. That goes for members, too. I don't know. Um, you go for I, I'm. I work here. You go. You go next. <laughs> yeah. Um, just end with mine. <laughs> yeah. in, he's just like, mine, mine was quality. In the stream. Well, like, what's your social media? What do you want to shout out? Uh, at Luke T. Ball. Uh, I don't do personal social media. I do our, our company, Mason Burrow. Mason Burrow Strategies. Mason Burrow Strategies. Um, yeah, and I think that, um, I think, but a uh, final thought for me would be um, when we talked about who do you want to be in D.C., what do we want to see, uh, stop trying to, you know, find the most likable person, the funniest ad, the most relatable, whatever, 
find the people with courage who will stand up because that's the most lacking thing is actual having that. Look courage. at their ideology scores too. Yeah. <laughs> like if for a re-election. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for coming, gentlemen. And, you know, Lisa can just shout out the oh, Culture yeah. War podcast. Um, yeah, definitely uh, subscribe to the Culture War on Tenant Media because that's where that is right now. And then you can follow me on Twitter at Lisa Elizabeth and follow Tim everywhere. IRL. And Cast. thanks, guys, for coming in. Thanks for having Absolutely. us. We'll be back tonight at TimCast IRL, 8 p.m., youtube.com slash TimCast IRL. This has been fun. Thanks for hanging out. Subscribe to Tenant Media for the show every Friday at 10 a.m. And we'll see you all next time.